All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we have an absolute red yellow Sabo extravaganza. We've got a red yellow Sabo marathon we're about to partake in. Uh, this will probably be my longest video yet, but we have 30 games to go through of red yellow Sabo. So that's all we're doing in today's video. No VV Lab, no art critique. You know exactly what you're getting into, guys. I will have everything timestamped down in the comment section below. Uh, or actually, actually, I'll have everything timestamped in the general description and all relevant links and a whole lot of deck lists. Deck lists in the comment section below. All right, without any further ado, guys, we got to hop straight into this because I expect this to be a very long video. Let's dive into it. First things first, guys, let me move uh, the leader screen here. First game up, we have against Green, Yellow, Arlong. I will have all these games timestamped. Like I said, if you want to see how how a, how a specific matchup goes for Red, Yellow, Sabo, I tried to get as many leaders as I could, guys, in 30 different games. So you'll be able to hop around and see how the matchup goes and maybe how you can potentially win against each matchup. And that's really what this video is going to be for. I want to preface this up front, guys, so that way you know uh, what we're getting into with this video. I want this to be kind of as a... I, I want this to be available as a guide for anyone who might want to know how to deal with each matchup as Red Yellow Sabo. Not to say this is the only way to deal with it, but it'd be one way, okay? All right, guys, let's check it out. Let's dive in. First game up is Arlong. Guys, I've got my water ready. Get comfortable. Grab some popcorn. Whatever you got to do to get comfortable. Like I said, I've got my water here because I know I'm going to need that throughout the video. Uh, first game here we have against Green, Yellow, Arlong. This is a version. Notice I'm running Nami here for the searchability for my rushers. Uh, and what was the first? I'm not. I'm not going to go backwards at all in this entire game, guys. Or excuse me, in this entire video, I'm going to try not to pause or go back at all. Because, like I said, we have 30 videos to go through. Okay. So right here, this is a hybrid version of Small Hat Crew with Revo Army. Okay. I got a Morley trigger, I believe, for my life against Arlong there. I'm going to swing for five. Excuse me. I attached two to my Morley to swing seven. Pushed him back to life, gave plus two to the Nami, swung for five there, and now I'm sw and I swung for six with my leader. I am just going relentless onslaught, you know, full on damage here. He swings in for eight, but I know what the top card of my life is, right? It's a Morley. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that, guys. <coughs> um, in this version of the build, like I said, it is a Straw Hat slash Revo Army build. So those five cost cards might potentially get me something good, but they might not as well. So right there, I play out the uh, the, the Zoro. I give him plus two, swing him for seven to pop a 5,000 power character, push him back to the top of my life with my leader effect, could not swing with my leader effect because of the Arlong, and then gave plus 2,000 to my Morley as well. <clears throat> so... Pretty good stuff so far, guys. Uh, and if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please do not hesitate to put them down in the comments section below. Okay, and I'm sorry if this video seems like it's going to be rushed. It's just, like I said, there's so much content to go through. I am going to kind of try to keep a pretty pretty steady pace. Okay, so my opponent has two life. I have two life. They, have, they only have one real character on the board for me to worry about. <clears throat> I might have to clear my throat in a minute, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, they only have one honest like threat on the board for me to worry about but guess what you better believe i'm going to attack into it they give me a 2k counter okay put that back on life swing eight into six that would have taken their last two cards if they even had enough to counter out of with it i take their body off the board okay they're going to swing it for five they have nine dawn open hmm what do they have here that that becomes my question what are they what do they have in their hand Okay, they're actually just trying to swing all out and now, now it's like okay well let me counter out of this one and they'll swing in with the next character they didn't even they didn't even do it. They developed a tiger fisher or a fisher tiger, excuse me. Okay, well I still have three life, so I can kind of do whatever I want this turn. And right now it's gonna be swing nine, swing nine. Right? Or or I, I think actually, excuse me, it's gonna be swing seven and then Nami Banish swing nine more. Okay, let's see what I get. Got the trigger. That was lucky, right? That was a little bit lucky. And then they go ahead and give up. That was a good game for my opponent. But guys, the, the the life battles, that's what Sabo does best, guys. Doing the life battles, that's where Sabo really shines. Okay, next game we got against Bonnie. Now understand, guys, these are in alphabetical order. Okay, these are in alphabetical order. And I do have a few um, 
uh, matchups that are how do I say this? Against some leaders, I have multiple matchups. Like I have I have three, four different Black Yellow Luffy games. Only one Bonnie, only one NL, one Luchi. You know, a few games I only have one, or a few. Most leaders I only have one game of, but a few you run into a lot on the ladder. Or on the uh, on the sim. Okay, so I swing five into the body there. I'm going to develop a pair of Sparrow. Notice what kind of version of the deck I'm running. Um, this is the version with Big Mom Pirates. I have to make sure... You know, it's on 2XB. We're good. Okay, so they swing in for five. It is dangerous to take life early, but that did pay off. That was a Tropical Torment that allowed me to pop the top card of my opponent's life, which was a Basil Hawkins. That was not insignificant. Let me tell you right now, that was not an insignificant hit from that uh, Tropical Torment. And it caused my opponent to lose life. So that's just massive. Okay, they're going to tap down my Pair of Sparrow. I'm going to swing it for six here. Then I think I'm going to develop a four-cost body. Let's see what I choose to do. They 2K counter out. Okay, they 2K counter out. Very nice, because because I am swinging for six and a five. And then I'm going to play out a Sanji. So let's see what they want to do here. I have to make sure it's on 2X speed, guys, just because of the nature of this video. Okay, we're good. One slip up adds five extra minutes. You know what I mean? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but all right. So it looks like they're loading up two on their on their uh, Uruj because they put up another blocker and they're thinking, okay, I don't have to worry about my Uruj getting KO'd. It's like, bro, you just swung in. That was that was a dangerous, that was a uh, very risky attack you had there. We we uh, get a Charlotte Pair of Sparrow from it. I'm going to swing five into five. He only has five cards in his hand, by the way, guys. Okay, so he's going to tap down my blocker. Smart. Okay, and let's see what he does here. He might give me a blocker. He might give me a 1K counter. Uh, I, I believe, if I remember this game correctly, he actually gives me the blocker there, the Rosinante. I swing five into five. He lets me have it. I'm like, okay, this guy must have nothing but gas in hand. So I go ahead and play out the Charlotte Linlin, and he trashes the top card of his life. Okay. All right. So I know he's trying to stay aggressive. He plays out another Urush. Okay. Let's see what he does here. I don't have a lot of counter power in hand. Let's just be honest, guys. I really don't. Okay. Looks like they have, they're loading up for nine. Where are they going? face okay less not not a great idea to go face against a deck that can gain life going for my board is much more frustrating for me to deal with and i think it's just the right call okay let's see what my opponent decides to do here <clears throat> i think swinging with my leader first is actually the right play here because I don't want him to tap down my Sanji. We see how aggressive this guy is going. But at the same time, he's probably running Hody Jones. And I can't get around that anyway. So I swing for nine. He's going to tap down my Sanji again. He's making his... Um, he's telegraphing his play to me very consistently. Okay, so they go ahead and take the 9k hit. They don't block out. They're down to two life. I play out Kid and Killer here. I'm going to swing for seven. I've got a very interesting play for my opponent here. I've got a very uh, high level play lined up for my opponent here. Swing seven into face. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens next. And by the way, I have another Kid and Killer in hand and a, another Luffy. Uh, one thing I will say is at the end of this video, we will check out some of the deck lists. We won't spend a whole lot of time on it because of how long this video is probably going to be, but we will check it out. Okay. Swing seven into my opponent here. Check this out, guys. What do you think my play is going to be? I'm not going to pause it. Attach two to Sanji, life him, and then give plus two to Parasparo, you know, for the turn, or until the end, of, until the start of my next turn. And now I can do this. All right, right here, I'm like very cool. So let me tell you my game plan because I remember how this goes. Um, my game plan right here, even though I could probably swing for lethal, I, I might have calculated lethal. I, I pretty much, I pretty much for sure have calculated lethal, <laughs> especially countering out of that. It's like okay, you know what? I'm going to swing. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to swing for 5, 5, 7, 8, and see what goes through. And then I'm just going to shanks this guy off the board. I'm not even taking the chance. I'm not even taking the chance of me somehow not having lethal in this situation, even though, like I said, if I actually took the time to do the math, I think I, I do have lethal because it would be like a 7, a 9, and then two two uh, more 9s, two more 10s or something. Yeah, it would be, excuse me, it'd be 7, 8, 10, 10. There's pretty much no way he can get out of that. But it's like, okay, who cares? He could not even get out of that, guys. He could not even get out of that attack where I didn't invest any Dawn. That's how bricked his hand was. Look at his hand. He was going for lethal next turn. But bad news, I was going to play Shanks, pop his uh, Zoro, and we're off to the races. All right, first game of Black Yellow Luffy here. I've actually got four of these games. Uh, using different versions, I think, each time. Maybe a few are, are, are uh, repeat versions, but a lot of these are uh, different versions. Whoa, that was, a, that was a close one. 2x speed. We're right, we're, we're right now, guys. We're good. Okay, so they start off with a flampe. A lot of Black Yellow Luffy's will do that. They'll go turn one, use a 2k counter. Okay, there's another 2k counter. 
the deck only runs eight to 10 2K counters. So they only have eight left maximum, probably, in, in the rest of their deck. More than likely, they probably only have six left. Because like I said, I think most decks run like four Flampe, four Makano, and then two Hiyori. Or excuse me, four Flampe, four Hiyori, and two Makano. And sometimes they don't even run the Makano. So he probably has like eight left in his deck. I swing for six. I'm like, go ahead. I mean, you're only on five Dawn right here. So let's see what he decides to do. This is a very, this is actually a very dangerous position for my opponent to be in. Okay, looks like they're gonna play out the Luffy. They're gonna pop my board there, my my uh, Parasparo. I think I whiffed the search. I didn't even see. I wasn't paying attention. I'm gonna get a Parasparo from life, and now, guys, I think I'm just gonna like go face here. We're gonna pop that there. We're gonna pop the Flampe with the Gadatsu. I just want a 6K body on the board so I can start doing damage next turn. Let me take a sip of water, guys. I gotta really pace myself for this uh, for this uh, marathon. Like I said, this uh, this uh, <laughs> extravaganza. Okay, we're back. All right, so they established the five-cost Luffy. They did not take their last life because otherwise they wouldn't be able to survive. Watch this, guys. I remember this. I'm going to swing for seven. Let's see what he does. Okay, just waiting for my opponent, my, my opponent at this point. And remember, this is on 2x speed, guys. He goes 1k, and I'm like, okay, 1k, 2k. No, 1k, 1k, 1k. Oof. All right, tell you what, we'll go plus two right here. We'll swing for seven at you, see what you give me this time. And he takes it, and I'm like, um, okay, time to load up. We'll swing seven, and then what I was going to do is swing seven more with um, Zoro. But, okay. Whoops, I just muted myself. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, hopefully, I didn't mute myself for that entire thing at the end there. All I was saying was um, I had him for multiple 7k attacks, but at the very end, what I should have done there was just swung all in with my leader for 7s. I mean, excuse me, for like, what what, what would that have been, uh, 12? And then that would have been for sure game. Okay, that was the first game of Black Yellow Luffy. Next game. Okay, another game of Black Yellow Luffy. Notice, notice what version of the deck I'm running this time. I've got, okay, let me say this. We are in order. Let me make sure, I have to make sure I'm on 2x speed for this one. 13 minute game here. Um... Okay, how do I say this? We're only in order of the names of who I'm playing against. Whatever deck I'm using, who knows? Like, literally, who knows? I mean, you can you can tell by just looking down there, but there is no order to that. Some sometimes I'm playing Big Mom Pirates. This game I'm playing NL, or uh, excuse me, Sky Island. I change it up quite a bit. And I'll try to show all these deck lists at the end of the video, or at least link them in the comment section below. Okay, I get a double Shura start because one came from life. Uh, or excuse me, I got I played one out on turn one and then played out Shura plus Onami on turn two. And now I'm swinging in for that. I swung in for five with Vanish and I believe he countered out or he took it. I don't think he really cares. Okay, let's see what he does here. He plays out Luffy. He, can, he cannot pop my characters yet because he has three life. Okay, swings in for five. I am going to counter out of that. I don't want to go too low too early. I want to try to deal with what he has here. Excuse me. Play out the Ohm. We go ahead and get the Holy because we already had it in hand. Your turn. Uh, this was a version of the deck I had been playing with for some time that I've been kind of messing with. And I do really like it. I actually really like the Sky Island version. But it seemed really inconsistent. Because sometimes you're ser ser searching with Shura. Other times you're searching with Ohm. Ohm can only grab Holy. And he might bottom deck cards you need, like rush cards in this deck. Shura will bottom deck rush cards all the time. And it just becomes very inconsistent in that way. Even though you'd think it'd be so powerful. Like, it seems like it makes so much sense. Okay, so th they're kind of just smashing in here. Smash 5, Smash 7. Uh, I think I, I take this one. Actually, we're just waiting on my opponent here. Oh, I think I took it. I can't remember. I, I, did, I wasn't paying enough attention. And he pops my Holy there. He uh, popped my own with Sabo and then popped my Holy with, uh, with Luffy. That was a pretty strong combo. I'm not even going to lie. Swing in for 7 here. Swing 7 at 5. He takes that. I'm going to swing for 7 more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to top life... Excuse me. I top of life my ace, swing in for six with my Nami, swing in for seven with my leader. Let's see what he does here. He's going to have to give me a 2K, 1K, or multiple 1Ks. Uh, and I haven't seen, I, there is a 2K counter in his trash. Okay, he did double 2K counter to get out of that. So that's good news for us, using up 2K counters like that. Okay, he plays out Garp. He's going to have to gain some life here. He really doesn't have a choice. All right, just waiting on my opponent here. Let's see what they try to do. 
They have seven cards, in, excuse me, eight cards in hand. They're going to swing six into five. Uh, there's no reason for me to defend this. Uh, I, I would rather him attack enemy and I get my ace back, to be honest. Okay, he uh, goes ahead and trashes Sabo. And now he's going to gain two life, which one's going to be a Sabo, the other's going to be a Luffy. He's going to play out the Sabo. And then he's going to probably play out the Luffy as well. Or, or maybe keep it there, who knows. It is smart to, to leave one life active as a, as a Black Yellow Luffy. Because if you can continuously get to 9k on the following turn while ha having one life left over, it's extremely hard to deal with. Okay, 6 into 5. We're going to 2k counter out of that. And then he swings for 9. We'll go ahead and take this one. Alright, so right here, it's all about aggression. I'm going to swing in for 6. He should just give me the blocker here, to be honest. We'll see what he does, though. Or a 1k, and then I can smash in with, for the rest on my uh, my leader. Okay, I'll swing 2 into 2. Let's see if he gives me anything. He does not. So in this situation here, I think I'm going to go 7. Let me see what I do. So attach. Yep. Push back the, um, the ace. Give 2 to my Shura. Give him 3 more to swing for 7. And then I can swing for 7 again with my leader. But we'll see what I decide to do here. I was, I was contemplating playing out the ace. The uh, 2 cost ace in my hand. I'm going to go 6 into 6 here, and that is a very annoying um, thing to deal with for, for my opponent. He gives me a 2k counter. Okay, now we're actually going to get, really try to punish this guy. We'll swing in for 7, we'll swing in for 8. He's going to have to give me his blocker here more than likely, or or another 2k counter. So we've seen two Surus, two Hiyoris. I can't remember. I think he might have had a Flampe at the, at the beginning of this game, or that might have been last game. I can't remember. But either way, not a good position for my opponent. He only has four cards left in hand. He's going to have to trash two cards. and try. He's going to have to try to go for lethal this turn, to be completely honest. Um, I mean, maybe not. Maybe he could go for my board. Uh, but that is not what Luffy ever wants to do. Right, that's pretty much never what Luffy's trying to do. Uh, Black, yellow Luffy. He swings in for, for five into seven. I... Uh, Hey, sorry, bud. That's uh, that's not going to work, and and I don't have a ton of sympathy uh, since your leader is doing what my leader's doing as well. So you should have known what was going on there. But at the same time, people make mistakes. Okay, he swings for seven there with his leader, or excuse me, with his with his ace. Swings in for nine here. I'm going to have to take this, and now he's going to swing for nine more. Going to have to. I I could have technically countered out of that, but I'd rather just take it because because this turn I have to go all in. I don't really have a choice here. Okay, let's see what happens. I guess technically I do. Now, now that I got that um, Lin Lin, I could have played that out and gone about things that way maybe, but I don't know, probably not a good idea. So we're going to swing for seven. That's going to force a 1k counter out of his hand. Um, I'm going to play out a Zoro here. We're going to life the ace. We're going to swing for seven more. Every single attack is forcing an attack from his hand. It's forcing a, um, a counter from his hand. Okay, so in this situation here, I'm actually... I'm actually in a really rough spot. So what I have to do, I think I'm going to have to pull this card out. Hang on, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to do the math right now in my head of what I have to do here, like in the game. I'm going to swing two into two. I'm like, okay, can I actually get rid of some of these cards on his board? Is that is that a possibility? Swing in for seven there. He can't do it. He can block if he wants to, right? Okay, and now right here, I'm going to have to swing in for six here. Seven into six, he can't. Bl I mean, he could block it if he wants to. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, now I'm basically saying you're gonna have to KO me right here. You're gonna have to do something to KO me because unless he drew a Luffy or a Gecko, this game's over. Those are the only two possibilities. Maybe a um, no, not even Flampe. Never mind. So he swings for 10. I'm counting. So he's gonna swing 10, 11. I have enough to get out of 11. I'll take it. Go ahead. Yep, come on, swing it in. Did the math already. We're good to go. Got to 12, into 11, and that's going to be game. Okay. Usually people just leave there, but uh, hey, that's all right. We'll swing for seven, and then we'll swing for seven. GG. Very fun. Very good game. Okay, next game. We got to keep a good pace, guys. I'm sorry if it feels like I'm rushing. We do have to keep a good pace for this. It's like I said, it's like we're running a marathon. Going to take a quick sip of this water while this game gets started. Y'all give me just a second. Okay, here we go, guys. Uh, this one, it looks like we got a game of, um, yeah, 2x speed. We're good. This game, I'm actually running a version of Red Yellow Sabo with Rev Army, Revo Army, and Rigo, Kingdom Come. Uh, just trying out something new. I've tried, guys, 
When I say I've tried out so many different versions of Red Yellow Sabo, I am not kidding. I have tried so, so many versions of Red Yellow Sabo at this point. It's, it's just wild. Okay, well, guess what, guys? Morley's real good against Black Yellow, uh, Black, Black Yellow Luffy. This guy's even running the Emporial Ivankov version, which I don't really like that version, to be honest. I haven't played Black Yellow Luffy in a minute, to be fair, but I, I really don't like that version that much. Okay, so my turn here. We're going to play out the Ivankov. We get a Karasu. Uh, he is not going to like that, right? That is that is a less than ideal situation for our opponent. I am going to swing for six into four. That is that is gross, right? Now, okay, right there, I was going to say I could have actually lifed my uh, Emporial Ivankov, the 6K, because uh, I could have attached one Dawn to it and then cheated out a card with my five my four cost 5K Ivankov, but I only have a Koala in hand. Is that worth it? Probably not. <clears throat> but it is an option. It, it was a play I could have done. Okay, swing for seven. I'm going to go ahead and take this. Swing for five. We're going to give him a 1K counter. I don't even have an ace in hand, so I'm going to trash that. And then I top deck an ace. Of course, that's how things work in this world. Yeah, I mean, that's how things work. Uh, uh, but, but hey, I actually... This board is no joke. I'm going to swing seven into four. Swinging it with Karasu first. Seven into four. And now... I'm about to lay it on this dude. He blocked out right now and gave me a counter. Like, I'm not about to go in, like, four more times. <laughs> it's like, buddy, I think you just I think you just ended the game for yourself right there. Six into four. He's got to give me a 2K, 1K. Okay, now we're going to life this card. Give this guy eight into four. Good luck getting out of that. <laughs> now everything in Morley. You love to see it, guys. Always be very um, aware of your of your uh, opponent's life, your opponent's cards in hand, all that stuff, okay? Okay, we got one more of Black Yellow Luffy. Don't worry, I know this was just four straight Black and Yellow Luffys, but this version, running a little bit of a film version, huh? Y'all see that down there? We got we got a, a Bearcat, or Baccarat, whatever name is, Shiraya, Sanji, of course, of course we even have um, uh, Nami. This version, I was trying all kinds of crazy stuff. I, guys, I'm, I'm serious. Like, when I say I've tried so many versions, it, it is a it is a crazy amount. And that's why I wanted to show you guys these games. I didn't want to, like, leave any of these games behind. Because I want you guys to see these, get ideas, use all these games as ideas. Okay, so pretty standard start here. You know, we've already seen this, what, three times in a row now. Got to make sure it's on 2x speed. We're good to go. Swinging 5 into 5 here. I'm fine with that. I really like that Saga card, too. I think it's kind of cool. The uh, the 4 calls 5K, 2K Counter Saga film card. I'm going to swing 5 into 5 here. I am actually kind of, uh, you know, tempting my opponent here. Like, hey, you want to take this? All right, go ahead. Now, okay, I'm waiting on... He actually got a trigger there with the, uh, with the event. I play out the uh, 3 cost starter deck Zoro. That can get to 7K by attaching 1 Dawn. Very solid card. And they play out a Sabo. And they're probably going to swing for 8 at face here or something. Okay, actually, they hit me with a Thunderbolt. So, Thunderbolting my Zoro off the board. Okay, I'm, I'm not really... Not really... Uh, I don't really care too much about that. Not not really a big deal is what I'm trying to say. And right now, he's at zero life. So, it's like, okay, dude, I'll, I'll tell you what. We're, I think I'm going to swing for 8 here and then play out a uh, Shariah. Has to give me a 2k counter or his blocker. I'll take either one. Or double 1k. I guess he does have two 2k counters on the board. Again, guys, if you're playing Black Yellow Luffy, yes, you have to play things in a very specific way. Everything is situational. But using your 2k counters this early in the game, it's it rarely ever works out in a good way. Sometimes it does, but a lot of times it does not. He's about to learn how Shariah works right here, guys. Check this out. Oh, man, swinging for 12. Okay, block, 2k counter. I, I would have used a 1k, but I don't want to use those two in my hand. I probably should have used the, uh, the Gadatsu, to be honest. But I'm actually thinking about establishing the Gadatsu right here. Okay, so we'll swing in for seven. You've got two cards in your hand. One of them's a Gecko Moria. I can almost guarantee it. We'll see what happens here. Takes it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. All right. So he takes that. It's like, well, let's go ahead and swing for nine then. You're going to give me the blocker. Now we're going to light this card. And then we're going to go in for eight into seven. And I absolutely, I, I think I kind of read this guy like a book here. About the pause. So this is the end of the game. He didn't have it. Like I said, Gecko Moria. It's just obvious, right? It's just like they're going to... If they had no 2K counters in hand and they took that first hit for 7 instead of using a 1K counter, they don't have anything in their hand, right? And then I swung for 9. They had to give me the blocker. That was one of those situations. Um, it is what it is. All right, let's keep going. Don't want to use too much time to talk about it. 
All right, we got a game against Carrot. This is OP08, probably OP08.5 is included as well. And here we go, guys. We got a game versus Carrot. They're going to start off with a Wanda. Well, we're playing a Big Mom Pirates version with 8-cost Katakuri. Pretty spicy, pretty spicy. I've said this before. I've had a lot of people ask me, like, hey, what, is, what do you think is the best version of Sabo? In OP07, we're about to be in OP08 in like two weeks, guys. One week or two weeks away at the time you're recording this video. In OP07, I feel like Big Mom Pirates was the, was the best version of the deck. That's just me personally. Some people think it was Revo Army. Think, think it's whatever you want to. It's fine with me. But for me, Big Mom Pirates with the top end included like uh, Katakuri, Yamato, and uh, like even Shanks. It just felt so strong so many times. Okay, so good thing he uh, countered out of my first attacks there so I could easily pop that Yamato with my Gadatsu. Now I'm swinging for five. Now I'm swinging for six. He gives me a 2k counter. My board is actually fine right now. He's in a lot of trouble. Whether he knows it or not, he's actually in a lot of trouble. Seven, probably into six here. That's a good call, but I am going to have to give him a 2k counter. And now it's my turn. Now it's my turn. Okay, we're going to go seven. I don't want this game to go on any longer than it needs to. Right, that's, that's my logic right here. That's my logic. Okay, let's see what happens here. Gonna play out the uh, Zoro. I kind of, so what I determined is, wow, I actually did that the wrong way. I could have swung for like way bigger attacks here, but oh well, it is what it is. I'm like, yeah, I just, I'm just gonna have to eat this one. So I'll push this guy back, give plus 2,000 to the Gadatsu. So that way it's gonna be harder for them to KO it. And then I'll go ahead and let them um, run over the Paris Sparrow and I'll get a search for it potentially. Okay, they used out um, Zao or whatever that card's called. They swing it for seven. I'm going to take that. It's the it's the Zora I wanted back anyway. They have locked down both of my attackers now. This is not good. This card, Carrot, is a... This leader, Carrot, is a menace, guys. It is an absolute menace. But hey, this game's not over. I'm just going to keep bashing my opponent's brains in, right? Swing in for eight. Push this guy back. Swing in for nine. I'm gaining a life every turn. And the second you leave one of those characters turned sideways... I'm going to gain a life, and you're going to lose a character every turn. It's, that's just how this deck goes. Okay, swinging for six here. I want a 2k counter out of this. I probably should have used the Satori, but still. They swing in for six more. I'll take it. Okay, they're going to swing for six. I think I should counter out because I have so many 2k counters in hand. There we go. I agree. Now, here we go. Let's see what they have this time. Just, just trying to do a little bit of math here. It's always going to be Zoro. Okay, in this situation, I'm going to attach one to my leader. I'm trying to do a little bit of math. I kind of want to get down that Charlotte smoothie, but it's also a counter in hand. So it's like, okay, maybe not. Like, all right, let's just blast in here. 11 into 5. I'm putting him on a one-turn clock. He has to have a blocker next turn or the game's over. And that's basically what I'm trying to show here. I have three life. I have two, four, six, eight. I have 8K counter in hand and a zero cost 3K, you know, after that. So I don't feel like I'm in any jeopardy of losing this game. Now, he does get a very strong card there. He does get a very strong card. Okay, swings in for six. I'm going to take this. I'm trying to get a trigger out of life now, guys. Just so you know, that is my game plan. We get a Charlotte Cracker. Seems good. He taps it down. Nope, you're not too, too late. You're not getting that card. Sorry. Yep, swing in for five. Take it. Why not? Because we're, we're going for lethal this turn. Okay, let's see what we do here. So it's going to be seven on Cracker. All right. And then I think it should be um, eight with my leader and then nine with Zoro. That's kind of the way that this should go. Seven. Okay. And now it should be eight. Let's see if I do it correctly. I'm just looking at it now because it's, e it's easy to do the math in my head from here. Okay. So yeah, five. I'm making sure I do it correctly. Yeah. Look, you see, it's taking me a while. We're getting there. Is this on 2x speed or am I just this slow? Guys, I'm just that slow, sorry. So, 7, 8, 9. It's like 2 in the morning at the time you're recording this video, or like 1 a.m., and I can do the math better than when I was doing this, this version in the game. All right, so oh, I was 8 and 8. Sorry, I was a little bit off there. GG, very close game. If they would have survived that turn, I'm done for, right? There's no way out for me. Next game, we got of Dragon. Okay, we got a game versus Dragon, Revo Army versus Revo Army here. And hey, I'll tell you what, I like my matchup against Dragon. I, I like my matchup against any kind of red deck as Sabo because I can meet their aggression with my... In, actually, excuse me, this version is not super aggressive, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. I can meet their aggression with my red aggression cards, but I also get to gain a life every single turn and potentially get way better triggers. 
Okay, they go ahead and play out Karasu and sw uh, swing for five last turn. Uh, in this situation here, I swing for five. Gadatsu would have been clutch right here because then I could have just popped this Karasu and moved about my business. But never lucky. You know, it is what it is. But I do have an omen in my hand here. We're going to swing for five. We're going to swing for six. They're giving me all the cards in their hand. I don't get what I need there, but I do have a holy in hand. Pass the turn back. My board's menacing. My board is absolutely menacing right now. I've got three five Ks on turn three. A 2k, whatever. That's actually fine, you know, with our leader. Swing for 7 into 5. We'll take it. It's fine. They're going to swing for 8 into 4 here, more than likely. Probably 8 into 4 or 7. In, yeah, 7 into 4 into my one of my characters. You can have that. They get another Karasu. Here's where I decide it's time to change the temperature of the... It's time to change the, the mood of this game, the tone of the game. Because right here, I actually want to go for his board. And he gives it to me right away. So I'm thinking, okay, he must not have a lot of um, counter power right here. So right here, what we're going to do is we're going to swing for seven into face. He's probably going to take this because he didn't even defend his one character. If he, if he counters out, I'm fine with that too, right? Just get all the cards out of your hand. I'm, I'm always okay with that. Okay. Just waiting on my opponent here. Again, they gave me a zero cost 3k. Very good. That, that gave me two cards. Now I'm going to put this card back to life. I'm going to swing for six with this guy and then seven with my leader. And this is probably going through. He's at two life. I have three life. I have three life. He has two life. I have three characters on the board, even though they're not the best characters. I have three characters versus his one. We both have equal cards. Actually, I have one more card in hand. So like as far as the value goes this game, I'm outvaluing my opponent by quite a bit right here. Okay, they swing six um, or seven into four, took out my uh, holy. That's fine. Now I'm going to go for his Karasu. I'm not even worried about it. He saw six dawn left for the turn. I wonder if he's going to play out the Sabo. I don't remember this game. This game must have happened quite some time ago because, because like I said, I actually just don't remember this game at all. He plays out the Koala from the Emporio Ivankov. Minus three there. That's why it's also good. To, I will say this. Typically speaking, you should not play out the Emporio Ivankov or characters first before your attacks. But I would play out Emporio Ivankov first because you can get a Karasu or a Koala to lower the, the power of a character and then go from there. Okay, so let's see what we're going to do here. They've totally shifted the tide of this battle. I had three, they had one. Now they have four, I have one. I'm going to swing six into five. I've got a little trick up my sleeve, right, guys? I've got a little trick up my sleeve. Let's see what they do. If they don't block this, they have no counter. Because you, you absolutely... Okay, they gave me two 1K counters. I was going to say, if you don't block that, something's wrong. Because you don't know what I'm going to do. So I swing for seven there. I'm going to push this back. And then we're going to go seven at life. And we're basically going to put him on like a one or two turn clock here. Uh, and we're at four life. And guess what you're going to give me out of life? You're going to give me a rusher or you're going to, and you're going to give me an ohm to, to do some other, you know, shenanigans. Um, now I do only have two dogs left in the list. You saw that I went, I, I checked the, uh, my, my uh, trash there and I have two um, holies already in the trash. Okay. So what does my opponent want to do here? I think just go for board. I mean, because I would develop one more turn. And just hope my opponent doesn't have what they need to, to take me out. Because right here, if you attack enemy, you're giving me a my win condition. Now, he doesn't know what my hand is. He might think that I have this card in my hand. And by the way, I can get it back from Flampe if I need to. But okay, you're going to swing for five. 1k counter out. Okay. Just waiting on my opponent here. Play dragon. Swing eight, swing nine. I'm completely fine with taking both of these. And now it's my turn. Let's see what they get. Oh, and I top deck another Zoro. Now it's now it's especially over, right? Now it is especially over. So we're going to swing for seven. They're going to give me a 2K, 1K here if they have it. I'm going to gain a life and do this again. Go seven and see if they have it. Okay, and they do not. They did not have it. GG, that was a close one. Hey, if I had not won that turn, I might have been in trouble. But I did have uh, two 2Ks. Uh, three 1Ks and a zero cost and a 3K and a zero cost 3K in hand. So I, I was actually uh, pretty good in that in that position. All right, we got a game against Anel, guys. We got a game against Anel. This is a uh, absolute banger here. Um, this was one of the last games I needed for this little thing where because I've I've got games against Luchi. I've got a game against Luchi, Anel, Bonnie, lots of Black Yellow Luffy games, Reju, Nami, Dofi, a bunch of a bunch of the matchups. I think a lot of people wanted to see in here. Uh, and then a bunch of random matchups as well. Like we saw Carrot. There's a Gecko game. Green Uda coming up. Green Blue Zanji. Katakuri. We've got... Guys, we got all kinds of stuff lined up in this game. All right, so this is an absolutely long, drawn-out game. I'm going to double, triple check that speed's on 2x, guys. Because, of, like I said, we're already on 35 minutes. We've gone through 9 out of 30 videos, okay? 
we're making good pace though. We're, we we got to keep this up. No no pausing. We're we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Okay. I'm going to swing five into five here. It is not always a good idea to push into to your opponent like this against a Nell because they just generate so much value. And when they get down to two life, they can actually start turning on cards like the five cost 7k Rush Ace, the five cost 6k uh, Rocket Boots Luffy. There, case in point, <laughs> right? There you go. Swing five into five here. Taking this would be a little bit irresponsible. But I do anyway. And then we, we get never punished. We get the Neko Mamushi. Now we can attack into his character. This is going to be flawless, right? This is going to be excellent. Okay, so right here, let's see what happens. I'm going to swing for eight into the Luffy. If he counters out, okay, it's like, okay, you know I can just do that again, right? So I, I attach this over here. This time we're going to swing nine into six because he, he, he's not able to save at that time. I swing six and a five. That, that was a little bit scary, taking him down to two, especially after seeing Monkey D. Luffy that early. But hey, you do have to put some pressure on your opponent or they can just drift into the late game very, very relaxed. They play out in a Nell. Russian Nell, I'm going to give him a zero cost 3k. Yeah, they play out Russian Nell here. Um, and guys, this game here, notice my hand. This is a version that's like Big Mom Pirates with, with a little bit of um, extra support from like that uh, two cost uh, Reva army event. I'm going to swing seven into seven. I love having a character to attack into. That's where I can start generating immense, immense amounts of value. Okay, let's swing seven more into here. Yep, swing seven. I was going to say, I shouldn't load up anymore. Just get every card from his hand. That's fine. Okay, he trashes his top life card. So now it's like, oh man. So in this situation here, I'm like, uh-oh. So it looks like he has a Yamato. That, that's immediately what was going through my mind. But, but it's like, you know what? It is what it is. Okay, he's going to swing 7 into 7. I have to counter out of this because he does have a Yamato. Like, there's there's no doubt in my mind, even if he doesn't have one, he has one. Right? That's how you have to play that situation there. He decides to not attack into my life so I couldn't get my uh, Neko Mamushi back because I would have dumped all my attack into that Yamato. I play out Shanks, pop his Yamato, your turn. I have a 10 cost 12k on the board. He only has one answer in his entire deck for this card, and it's a Raigo. If he gets it, he gets it. If not, then whatever, you know. He plays out the 10 cost ace. Seems good. We'll see what he decides to do with it. <clears throat> decides not to attack. This is where Neko Mamushi is actually so good, guys. Neko Mamushi breaks stalemates like it's nothing, because you start attacking into their board. You know, it's like, oh, but they didn't attack. No one cares, right? It's like, literally no one cares. You just deal with it anyway. Okay, so let's see what they do here. I'm just developing a board. They're trashing cards from their life. I got a Raigo from that. Seems good. Every now and then you hit a trigger with that big mom. That's like, oh, that was crazy. Okay, they attack in. I get my Neko Mamushi here. I, uh, they swing for seven. I use the Dragon Emperor, or the Flaming Dragon King to set my top cards, and they were both duds. They were both dead cards. So right here, I'm going to take this because I don't want to lose my Sanji unless I have to. Here we go. That's why I saved my Sanji. I'm like, just in case he has another uh, ace, I'm going to have to protect it. Uh, okay, but now, now it is time to go for this board. It is time to go for the board. 12 into 10. This is going to cost a 2k and a 1k or a zero cost plus 3k. He gives me a 2k, uh, 2k, 1k. Very good. He's only got two cards left in hand, though. I do have a uh, Koala in my hand. But I don't, I've got a lot going through my mind right now, right? Like, I'm like, okay, because th this is this is the situation you're going to find yourself in against Anel, where it's like, what am I supposed to do here, right? And you have to, like, take some time. You know, the early game's easier to kind of to walk through. At this point of the game, you need to take your time, though. Okay, if he has a 2K, 1K right here, I'm just, I'm, I'm probably just dead meat, right? That was, that was all that was going through my head. All right, so right here, I'm going to push this card back to life. I actually think I pushed the ace, uh, excuse me, not the ace, the shanks, the, the shanks back, but no, I actually pushed back the Lin Lin. The ace, the, the shanks, there I go again. The shanks is much easier to defend. Okay, so right here, I am going to try as hard as I can to swing eight into seven here. We'll see what he does. I had already kind of um, figured out he didn't have 2k, 1k. He only has a 2k or he only has a 1k. So he only had a 1k and we know that because he didn't defend the first ace. Okay, so now I'm going to swing 8 and 7, and this thing should be gone. Okay, you do have to pay very, very, very close attention to how your opponent reacts each turn. But hey, this game is far from over. This game is far, far from over. Even though I've got 5 cards in my hand, I've got 4 cards on the board, 2 life, 
You guys know how Anel works, right? Like, Anel's in, in insane. Okay, let's see what they want to do here. I don't... Here's the crazy part, guys. If they wanted to, they don't know this, but if they wanted to, they could swing five with that um, with that flambe right there, and then seven and nine, and I lose the game. Because I already know it's in my life, guys. I already know. It was the the Lin Lin, and it was the uh, zero... It's, it's a three-cost uh, tropical torment. Like, to totally garbage. Okay, very good. Now it's my turn again. I did at least draw a 2k counter. I have two Dawn active now where I can use my flame, uh, Flaming Dragon King. Uh, but but what do I do with this board now? What do I do with the board? I'm going to swing... Okay, this was tricky because I still needed to... How do I say this? I swung into an L. I was really hoping I could get rid of that an L. But, you know, it doesn't always work that way, right? It does not always work that way. What I'm doing right now is I'm calculating where I have at least two Dawn active at the end of the turn for my Flaming Dragon King, or I might lose the game. So I swing nine into seven. He can't, it can't survive now. And then all the rest is going to go on the Neko Mamushi, and I'm swinging into the, uh, into the, whatever his name is, Katakuri. Okay. It's my opponent's turn. I have two Dawn up. He hits me with a Rygo. So that was a good turn, I guess, to get that, uh, that card out of the way. I play out the Lin Lin. Let's see if he wants to give me a card from life. Okay, he lets me gain a life. I play out the uh, the Parasparo, and I don't attack into him right here. I probably should have, because if it was a trigger, I don't think he could do anything with it. In the worst case scenario, he has to trash it to gain the extra life, but then we're giving him more chances at triggers. I don't know. That, that was a tough call. I don't know. N not really worth it, in my opinion. Okay, he swings in there. I get a Sanji trigger. We'll take it every single time, and I'm starting to, I'm starting to feel like this game's about over, right? So I play out the Lin Lin. Let's see what he wants to give me. He should just take this life at this point, to be honest, guys. I'm not going to lie. Giving me life here just seems crazy. He gives me life anyway. Okay, we'll take it. Like I said, we'll take it every single time. So right here, I do need to go for this, uh, for the ace. I give him plus, plus uh, two. Swing in for ten. He should just block out. Absolutely. And let's see what happens here. Um, I don't want to give him any cards. Like, I just don't want to. Guys, don't give an L cards. He he will use them and he will beat you with them every single time. And remember, they're a yellow deck. They have nothing but triggers. Of course he gets a Gadatsu, but hey, I'm glad he got Gadatsu over something like, you know, Yamato or another ace or something. Okay, ten into ten. I'm not I can't let him have that. Not that easily. We we gotta give him a two K counter here. I give him the Frankie because I'd rather have the card draw if possible. Okay, give him another two K counter. Or do I just... Instead, I decide to use the Flaming Dragon King to set my top life cards, so that way, whenever he goes into attack, number one, I know I have a Frankie at the bottom now, and I can get my Shanks first. Okay, so here we go. Ten in, the, ten in there. Go ahead and play out these... Uh, the, guys, these Lin Lins, the Charlotte Lin Lin carries against an L. It absolutely carries. Every time I'm making them scrap a life or I'm gaining a life, it's massive. It is so massive, guys. All right, this game's getting close to the end now. This is, a, like I said, this is a, a long game. This has been on 2x speed the whole time. I do apologize, guys. Some of these games are so long, especially against Anel. Games against Bonnie, games against Anel, they just run long. Okay, so I do give him some cards here. I swing in. I'm like, all right, what do I do now? What am I supposed to do? I just pass the turn. I don't, I don't life one of my cards or anything like that. I just pass. I want big bodies on the board so I can try to win this game. And I also don't want to put my life too high for cards like that. Of course, he gets a Yamato. It could not have been better timing. I go ahead and take that. Nice. It's a, it's a Sanji. We'll take it every single time. I'm, now I'm daring him. Please attack into me. I dare you because I will take that Shanks and I will melt your Yamato. I will absolutely melt that Yamato. Okay. Right here, I could just get rid of the Gadatsu. Again, I'm just I'm not going to give this guy any chance of winning this game. Even though, guys, you might be thinking, like, why don't you just attack? Because what if he has a beige? What if he has this? What if he has that? I'm just not chancing it, guys. There's there's no reason for me to throw this game right now. This game is far from over. <laughs> Y'all saw, guys. I, mean, I I hate to give the little spoilers. This game still had, like, five minutes left a second ago, right? And we're in 2x speed, but still. I'm like, okay, let me swing for nine, see what happens here. It goes, it, it should go through, of course, and then I can smash in and take him down to zero. There you go. That's why I don't attack. He gets no Nami. He gets his life back. I'm like, uh, okay, that's cool. That's cool or whatever, <laughs> right? Okay, right here. I'm, I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, we're just going to put this guy down. 
I pushed this. Um, what I should have done was push push the um, the uh, Luffy back. Actually, excuse me. No, I shouldn't have. Never mind. That was right. Swing for 10. He's at zero now. His turn. And I have Luffy in hand. So he can't play a Shiro Hoshi. He can't play anything to get out of this. He has to gain life this turn. He has to. He must. Okay. They play out a Flampe. And then they push it back to life. Seems good. Okay. But I again, I have Lin Lin on top of my life. I can continuously get val I can continuously get value from this card. I had to let that go. I didn't have enough counter power. It is what it is. And let's see what my opponent does here. They're probably just going to pass because they if they swing into me, they just give me a Lin Lin, and I just keep gaining life and I keep establishing bodies. Okay, so now I'm like, okay, I think I can finally end the game. I swing for seven into five. He can't counter out of this. It's impossible, and I know he has no trigger coming. So here we go. Let's see what he gets. Okay, so right here, we're going to swing for seven more. Again, I know he cannot get out of this. Let's see what trigger he gets. No trigger. All right, no trigger. GG. Now we can play out the, um, well, okay, I was going to do the uh, Kid and Killer, but it's much better to take them out with a Koala, of course. Okay, next game. That one, guys, that was a that was a good game against that Anel. It, it drug on for a long time, but those games do drag out quite a bit. All right, here we go. We got a game versus Gecko. Speed, 2x, and we are good to go. Now, this is me running the um, the uh, Revo Army version. But notice, that's why I like the Big Mom Pirates version, guys. I feel like it has so much versatility. It can brick every now and then where you bottom deck all of your uh, rush cards. But, I mean, it just it happens. You know, it's, it's hard to say. We'll have to wait till OP09 before we can go fully all in on, on Revo Army, I think. That's when we'll get the support we need from Revo Army. But we'll have to see how things go. Could be plenty of changes in between now and then. All right, they play out a Brandy for the turn. They're going to swing for six. They're going to pull out a Perona. I'm going to have to trash a card. I'll give them a Lindbergh, I think, here. Yeah, don't need the Lindbergh. And we'll, I took a counter out. I like that. I don't want to go down uh, life too too quickly against this guy. Uh, and this guy's running some type of... Uh, he's running Sakazuki in the list. He's running brand new. This is like the Navy version of, um, of Gekko Moria. I'm going to swing for seven. That is a Banish character, so he's going to have to give me... Okay, I was going to say he has to give me two cards from hand or his life card, and the life card does not go to hand. Swing for seven more since that other one didn't go through. Hey, here comes another one, 7K with Vanish. Let's see what he does. He gives me a 2K, 1K that time. All right, your turn. I'm going to let you go ahead now. I'm going to let you go. I go up to four life, my opponent's turn. They play out a third brand new. They are filling their trash up like crazy right now. Swing in for six. They play out the Perona. I've got to trash a card. I tra trash in Azuma, whatever, and I'm going to 2K counter out. Okay. And then they just passed. Sorry, guys. That that was just a quick game. That guy had a lot more left in the tank. I don't know why he just gave up. But at the same time, you know, it is what it is. All right. Green Uda. Sorry. N not many games are like that. And in, in fact, if I had remembered that game was like that, I would have just take, taken it out. So my apologies there. That was more of a tease than anything. Okay. We got a game versus Green Uda. Okay. We got a game versus Green Uda. And look at what I'm running, guys. This is a Landawano version. I think this is just a... Uh, everything good version. I don't think this is actually a specific version. This is me just running lots of different combinations of cards in the deck with Big Mom Pirate support because I'm obviously running the pudding. Okay, so swinging in for five, swing in for five again. They're going to give me some cards from hand. Uda, Uda draws cards all day, guys. Uda draws cards all day. That was a tongue twister. That was hard to say. All right, let me take a sip of my water, guys. I'm trying to pace myself for this, uh, for this, uh, you know, this marathon. Okay, I don't know why they would not attack into my pudding there with the Trafalgar Law. They must be trying to set up for some, like, crazy combo. I, I, I really don't know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play out the Kikinojo, establish some momentum here. And they are still up for life, so if they KO my Kikinojo, I do not get to gain a life with this. Because they do run a uh, backlight where they can just tap my guy down and smash into it. Swing for six, they get a Nami from the top of their deck. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Um, I go ahead and 2k counter out of that with a Flampe. Let's see what they do now. Uh, next turn, I will be on 7 Dawn. So they have 5 Dawn left to work with because they've already used 1 Dawn. What are they going to do here? I have no idea. Okay. 
Five Dawn is like, okay, yeah, so they, they go ahead and play out a Nami. They cheated it out with that law. So there you go. That's what That was their, their crazy play they had worked up. They're going to do a top three search. Very solid. They still have three Dawn left. Maybe they'll replay the law. No, okay, they'll play out the Uda. Very nice. Se seems like this guy knows what he's doing. Like he sp spent time building this deck the way, that, the way that they built it. Okay, I'm going to swing for seven. That's always a number. That's always a fearsome number. Two over whatever the, the leader power is of, of your opponent is always going to elicit a response. All right, I'm, I'm trying to get as much damage in here as I can. I'm going to swing for five. I'm going to swing for seven. I'm going to swing for seven again. And now it's their turn. They're down to three life. They should have blocked that. If, if I were... That was not a very heads-up play by the green Uda player. Blocking there with the three-cost Uda was for sure the play. Because now I don't care about taking this hit. I'm just going to get my Kikinojo back into play. You know what I mean? <clears throat> okay, they're going to swing six into four. They're going to draw a card from that effect. They're just drawing cards like crazy. I didn't even see what they drew that time. I'm going to take it, get out Kikinojo. They play out Brook, playing out Usopp. And guys, this is a game. Like, we're, we're playing One Piece now. Like, we're, we're playing One Piece right now. Okay, let's see what happens here. My turn. I'm going to swing seven into five. And now I'm going to start eating cards up. Okay, or I'm either going to eat up bodies on the board or cards out of hand. They said they, they don't want any part of that. Okay, I respect it. They trashed that card. And now I'm going to start smashing in with Paris Barrow. <laughs> now it's Parasparo's turn, right? I'm going to swing for six. I'm going to swing for seven. And it looks like I've got, uh, what, six, uh, seven Dawn left. Let's see what I do with this. I think I'm just going to establish a four cost and a three cost. All right. They gave me a 2K, 1K. Yep. We'll, we'll uh, go wide on the board here. Your turn. Because there is only one card that I'm really scared of right now. I'm not really scared of, quote unquote, but that I don't want to see. And that's Zoro. I don't care about Doflamingo. I don't care about 8-cost Eustace Kid. I can play around those for the most part, but there is no playing around Zoro. Okay, I take that. They're going to swing for 6 here. Looks like I'm probably going to 2k. Yeah, I don't want to take too much of this. I trashed the Flampe over the uh, the Otama there, and they play out Zoro, by the way. I trashed the uh, Flampe over the Otama there because the Otama I can push back to life. Okay, so I'm pretty much in like... Um, I'm going to lose mode right now. That's what that's what's going through my head. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to swing for seven. Uh, like, I feel like I'm in deep, deep trouble here. That's, where, that's what it feels like currently. So right here, we're going to push this back, and we're going to start swinging sevens. It's just going to be sevens all day, every day. I'm, I'm trying to do the math here to see if I can actually win on this turn. So I'm like, you know what? Let me go five in here, see what he does, see what he gives me. Okay. Now, right here, what I can do, because I could gain life, right? I can actually still gain life with my, um, um, w well, with a few different things. I can either gain life with my Momonosuke and get a blocker, or I can gain life with my, um, what's his name, uh, Kat Katakuri. I'm going to swing five and a five here. He gives me that. I'm going to gain a life with my um, my smoothie. I'm going to swing six in the face here. He's probably going to take this. I don't know if he has, I mean, he only has two cards left in hand. I'll take it. I'll take a 2K from hand or a 1K, 1K. Or a blocker. He might give me a blocker. It's hard to say. Uh, he's got three very strong, um, you know, uh, options. He takes it, goes down to one. Now what is my opponent going to do? They're going to new Genesis to start. That's a good start. Swing for five. Okay. I have to be, guys, I have to be so careful right here. Because if they have, if they have a, um, what's it called? The little, uh, I can't remember the name of it, uh, I'm invincible. He's got five more attacks this turn. Uh, three of them are going to be 9K plus, you know? So I have to be so careful right here, guys. I will say this, though. If they have I'm invincible and they want to use Zoro three times, that will be six Dawn. So then they only have four Dawn to play around with. It'll be four nines. I do not play that out. I need the 1K counter in hand. Okay, let's see what they do now. They're going to swing for a nine. Of course, I'm just going to take this and play it. I'm saying, hey, dude, you better win this turn now. Like, now that you've gone to this point, you're going to have to win this turn. Because if you don't, I'm for sure going to win on the crackback. So all I need is one 2K counter or two 1K counters from my life. Got a 2K counter, the game's over. Okay. They're going to swing for nine more. This is GG, by the way. There is no chance for them to win at this point. It doesn't matter if they play a blocker. It doesn't matter if they swing two more times. I've won the game. At this point, I just know it's over because, like I said, all I needed was a 2K from, from my life or two 1Ks, and I'm fine. Or or even a blocker, like a Sanji, of course. Or, or like, if my last life was a uh, the zero cost. 
And look at this, guys. They're like, okay, I think I can survive. It's like, dude, I, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I, I do not think so, dude. Uh, uh, but okay, I'll tell you what. Now I know you can't because I counted out of that. Hey, now he knew. I, I don't know. I think he should have gone for game. I mean, yes, he would have lost on the spot because I had it. But let's see what he does now. Is, what's he going to do now? Swing it nine into face? Okay, sure. And it was another 2K counter, by the way. So that was pretty crazy. Okay, my turn. So now uh, we're going to start off with a nine. This is going through for sure. Or they're going to have to give me cards from hand. Okay, now it's time to go nine. The last time it went through, it's probably going to go through again. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they get what they need out of life. And he just, go, he, he just gives up. Uh, he had a 2K, 1K, 1K in hand. We're all right. You know, that's that's one of the few games there, guys, where I actually survived a Zoro encounter without having, um, like, Rygo or some type of, like, uh, Shanks or something like that. If you play things just right, this deck has a lot of options, right? This, this deck has a lot of options. So, again, if you play just right, you can win. Um, all right. So, my opponent here is going to play out some Goku, do a top five search for a seven Warlords. This is the, the, uh, the Revo Army version of, of the deck. We'll see what happens here. They're going to... Um, Okay, I played out a Morley. They play out a Mihawk, which which cheats out a Edward Weevil. Uh, they pull it back with the leader effect, standing up the Weevil, and that was basically just an extra damage for the turn. Uh, it's a fancy play, but it does it is one extra um, one thousand power for the turn. Okay, so right here they go ahead and one K counter out. I'm trying to go as wide as I can this game. Whatever they swing sideways with, if it stays sideways, it, it's that card's dead. Right, that, that's all that's going through my head right now. Whatever whatever card goes sideways, I'm eating it. I'm eating it up. Because this guy can... Go, for those who are not aware how... Okay, they don't play... They must be trying to play out the uh, six cost. Okay, Red Rock. Okay, I was going to say the six cost Boa Hancock. Uh, for those who are not aware how uh, Zoro and Sanji... The Z Green Blue Zanji works. You can attack a lot of times with it. Let me just say that right now. You attach one Dawn. You stand up 7Ks. It just goes crazy. So I'm going to swing 7. He 2k, 1k's out. Notice he trashed his pudding. Yep, I'm going as many cards out of my hand as possible this game. You're not going to get a good chance for pudding. Plays out another Sengoku. Let's see what he searches up. It looks like I have my mouse over on the left for now. Let's see. Just waiting on my opponent to search. Okay, and it looks like they whiffed. Looks like they might have whiffed that. Okay, let's see what they decide to do here. Um, my board is actually pretty nasty right like like i'm threatening lethal actually they have five cards in hand and three life i have six attacks next turn and seven if i need it okay let's see what they decide to do they got a boa hancock okay so they finally did the search with sengoku they got a boa they're going to swing for five they're probably going to play that out this turn lock down my inazuma bottom deck my bellow betty and that would be the right call here swing for seven i'm not a fan of that I'm not a big fan of that. We're going to have to take it, unfortunately. Boa, Lockdown and Azuma, bottom deck my, my card. Exactly. That, that was as expected. I'm going to swing six into this guy right here every single time. I'm going to swing into him with every single one of my cards. He lets it go on the first hit. That's actually a good... That's why you attack with your leader first, if you can, into the board. Not into life, because if it's into life, they can get triggers. But into the board, swing in with your leader first, because if I don't want to swing all out this turn, I won't. You know what I mean? I just won't do it. Okay, right now I'm starting to think, you know what I should have done? I, I feel like I should have actually gone um, uh, uh, Karasu and tried to go for game. Like, as crazy as that might sound, I think I actually should have probably tried to go for game. Okay, play this guy out. Go ahead and get, a, get another Morley. Okay, your turn, bud. He has to win this turn, which is not impossible. Which is not impossible for Green Blue Zanji, by the way. For those who might be thinking, oh yeah, you've got this game in the bag. No, honestly, I think if this guy had done things correctly, I lose this game. Because here's how I would have done things. Okay, I don't have a blocker. I have five cards in hand. He could swing nine with Boa Hancock, and then he could swing seven with his leader. That's only three Dawn. So then he could go, so five, let me see. Yeah, it would be five, six, nine, seven, six. Yeah, five, six, nine, seven, six, in, in whatever order you need for it to be. Okay, he's going to go 7 instead of 8 on uh, Boa. That's fine. Or maybe he's going to go 7 instead of... Uh, or 6 instead of uh, 7 on Zanji. I take this. We already know what it is. Here we go. So at this point right here, you swing with Boa first because you have to pull her back to hand. I'm going to have to take this. Now, luckily, I got a 1K counter. That was all I needed. 
because right here I'm going to give him a 1k 1k that was literally all I needed was a 1k counter and now I survive gg so they might as well leave here but this is the end of the game because now it's just going to be lots and lots of attacks for seven plus so I'm gonna swing for seven he takes that I didn't expect him to take that, so I, I guess I should have technically, pause, I, I guess I technically should have swung in first with my uh, Inazuma, but yeah, I didn't expect him to take the first hit, but I guess he realized, like, wait a minute, he's got Inazuma on the board, why wouldn't he? And right there, guys, I was going to swing for sevens on sevens on sevens on sevens, it's just, it's like the magic number in this game. All right, we got a few games of green, yellow Yamato now. We, we, we've got three games of green, yellow Yamato. And it looks like this first game up here, I'm going to be running a deck of, uh, running the version of the deck with Big Mom Pirates and a little bit of uh, rush support uh, and tri Russian trigger support. Okay, let's see, what, let's see what our opponent's got here. Let's see what's going on. Okay, they're going to swing double attack. We take it. One thing I will say, guys, is just like, I don't know what it is. It's like with Red Purple Law. I feel like Green Yellow Yamato, I feel like we just counter it. It's not that we can't lose. We can definitely lose to a good Yamato player, especially if we don't get a good pull. But generally speaking, I feel like our matchup against uh, Green Yellow Yamato is very, very solid. Okay, swing in six into five. We're going to 2k counter out of that. Just making sure we're on 2x speed, guys. Uh, they're going to go ahead and cheat out a Momonosuke, but they have nothing to throw back into life. I don't even know if I would have done it then at that point, honestly. I'm going to life the Kikinojo. I'm going to swing seven into here. He's going to block there, 2k counter out. Well, I'm going to swing six into there. <laughs> now you have to give me another card from hand. Because instead of going out of space there where he gets to draw a card instead, it's like, no, you have to give me another card from hand or you lose your guy. So that's, that's why I did that in that order. He had to give me a 2k and a 1k there. A 2k for the first attack, 1k for the second. Swinging in for 11, I'm like, dude, I can just gain life next turn. I get a body on the board. We'll take it every time. Um, I'm, I'm just not scared. I'm not scared of losing uh, double life against, against Yamato because I can just always gain it back. I'll swing for 7 first, and then I'll put this card right back into my life. <laughs> every time, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So right here, I think uh, I should have probably swung 6 first. Because I think, I actually think I should have played out the ace here. Um, I might still do that, but let's see what I do. Swing for seven. He's going to block it. I'm going to swing for six into six. He loses it. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and play out. I, I think, yeah, I think I should play out the, uh, all right. Well, I play that out and I, I just don't swing. I think I should have played out the, the Parasparo, to be honest. Since since I didn't play out the uh, the ace in time to do that correctly with the, with the uh, ordering and the, and the uh, sequencing, I think I should have just played out the uh the Parasparo. Okay, nine. I'm going to take it, guys. Again, I'm going to gain life every single turn. This leader basically nullifies the double attack on Yamato. That's the best way I know how to say it. Okay, but this game's not over. The game's not over yet. Okay. Swing for seven into five. All right. We'll see what they do with this. They take it. Okay. Any triggers? That's the one thing that can hurt me. That's the one thing that can hurt me is triggers. We're just waiting on our opponent here. Actually, okay, I think we're waiting on me. I'm going to swing for seven more. They're going to block in 2k. Okay, well, guess what? You turn the character sideways. I'm going to go up one life. And I, I actually, right here, looks like I'm going to try to end the, ga end the game. Let's see what I do here. Uh, seeing if they got a trigger or not. Okay. So right here, we're going to swing for a nine. Nine into five. And then we're going in for a 12. GG. So in that situation, I wasn't scared even if they could somehow survive it and have a Hody Jones, it doesn't matter because at that point I'm a 7,000 power leader. So if they have Hody Jones, well, I don't know, actually, my apologies. Okay, so if they if if they had not, if how do I say this? If they somehow survived, then I was in, I was in deep trouble, right? Because they could just go 15 at face and I'm, and I'm dead meat. Because I could have only gotten to, uh, so, so I'm at seven, so it would have been nine, 11, 12. So I, yeah, I, I pretty much couldn't have got out of that. All right, next game. Another, we've got two two more games against Green Yellow Yamato. Okay, another Big Mom Pirates version. Uh, pr probably the majority of these games will be Big Mom Pirates and Rebo Army with a few other random ones mixed in. Uh, because it was just... Guys, it was what I was just piling up games with. I was like, man, th this deck just seems so strong. It, I was just piling up games to, uh, to watch later. Okay, they get a double Momonosuke start. I'm going to swing in for two here. I typically don't block out of the first attack from Yamato, but if it's only for five, I'm going to block out with a, with a little 1k. I eat up his board. He's going to swing for eight. Now we'll take it. We get a, we get a, a, a trigger with Sanji. Their turn. 
or our turn now after they do the Hiori. They, they set a card to the top of their life. We're going to swing for seven here with double attack. They get they get double trigger. Uh, not ideal. That's you, you guys know I love to say that. that. That was less than ideal. Well, now I have to swing for five. Now I have to put an extra dawn on the, uh, the uh, cracker to get him to seven. Push that card back. I've got three life still. One's a trigger. I've got a 7k blocker. I'm okay right now, but I'm not in great shape. Okay, six into my... He swung six into my pudding. I'm like, sure, you can have it. Okay, Neko Mamushi here. This is annoying. And I'm like, you know what? I think I have to save this card. I think I just simply have to. I don't think it's even an option. Okay, so right here, let's see what I do. So I'm going to tell you what I should do. I don't know what I do in this situation. What I should do is I should smash into... No, okay, so so what I should have done was swung five... Okay, I should have swung seven in, into Nekomamushi and lifed my card, lifed my, uh, my Sanji, and then smashed everything else into the Kikinojo, and they wouldn't have gained life because I would have had um, uh, four life. They play out Olin. Okay, sure, you can have Olin right here. They choose not to attack because they didn't want to give me my guy. Well, I've got bad news for this person, right? I've got bad news for them. I am going to probably play out. So I'm going to swing seven into the Neko. He's going to let this go. And then I'm going to swing eight in the face. Let's see what they get first. No trigger. Now life the Olin to the front of their life. So now they don't get to actually get it as a trigger, right? Because Olin says if you have one or less life, uh, that's when the trigger works. Okay, they play out Momonosuke, do a search, play out Hiyori, snag the Olin, did something there, play out Momonosuke, pushing Hiyori there. So they know what their third life is. I get the uh, Charlotte Cracker back. Seems good. Double attack. We'll take it every time. We'll see what they do here. Oh, beautiful. He went up to four life. I play out Yamato. I go ahead and crack his character there. And right here, I'm going to, I think I'm going to life. Um, let's see what, if I choose to life anything here. I absolutely should. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, life the Yamato here. I actually think so. And then I, I, I uh, buff my, my cracker there, so now he can't really deal with that as easily. But he pops the cracker very easily. Swing eight. This is not double attack, so I'm like, uh, sure. I guess I'll just pop your uh, your character next turn, I guess. Swing for six. I give him a 2k counter. And here we go. Let's see. We've got a lot of options here, because I think I could just go for a game, right? Um, I don't know. I don't remember what I do here, but I think if I just swing for nine, 11, 11... That's game. Like, I don't think they're getting out of that. I don't I don't think there's a world where they get out of that. I don't know why I wouldn't just go 11-11 here. They're, they're, I know it's in their hand. Yeah, that was... Well, I, okay, they would have gotten out of it either way. Okay, we'll swing in here. And then we, they gain a life. That's fine. Because now we're just going to gain a life here. Plus two there. And pass the turn. I don't want to play out the, um, the 1k counter in my hand. The uh, smoothie. For that reason right there. Now I can just 2k 1k. They... I, I know they have a, um, so pause, I, I know, I'm not going to pause it. I know they have, what's his name? So I'm doing the math right now, and I have to count out of this. I know they have Hody Jones. I know they have it. They left Seven Dawn open. So right here, they, they were going to play out Hody, buff him plus two from the leader effect, swing in for 10, and go about things that way. All right, let's see what they do here. That's definitely what they were going to do. <laughs> For those who are not aware, they have exactly seven Dawn left. I'm at one life. Hody Jones, go plus two to it, swing 10 at face, and, and finish the game. I only had nine to get out of it. Okay, and then they swing for seven there. Sure, I'll take that, no problem. And now there's pretty much no way we can lose at this point, right? We'll go seven, we'll go eight or nine, whatever, and then we will play out Kid and Killer. One of the best closers, we're going to come in for 10. I almost clicked on the Hiori there. That would have been upsetting. So like I said, they had 200 million volts of Maru to get around a blocker. They had Hody Jones. They had it all. They had all, everything they needed to close that game out. But it's hard to play around gaining life. Okay, we got another game here, guys. I'm going to go speed 2x, and I'm going to grab a sip of my water real quick. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is a weird version right here. I do I, I do vaguely remember this game. And notice I'm, I'm running a Straw Hat version of the deck. Okay, so they smash in. I think I counted out for 2K. Yep, 
So right here, I'm going to give this guy Banish and Smash in for 7. That is an ugly, ugly thing to do. They give me a 2k, 1k. We'll take it. And then we'll swing for uh, 7 more. And I life the Zoro, so now he can't get any um, attacks into that. And I get to eat one more attack from Yamato. Uh, one thing that's nice about the Straw Hat version is look at the things I can search up in my hand. Nami can search up Onami because they are not the same name. And, and of course, they're both Straw Hat crew. Okay, they swing in for two there. So I get my uh, three calls to Zoro back and a 2k counter. Excuse me. So here they're going to swing in for five. Okay. I go ahead and take this, go down to two. Or did I 2k counter? I, I don't remember. And I'm not going backwards. Okay, they moment Osuke here to push back the Izo. Again, guys, I feel very comfortable with my matchup into Green Yellow Yamato because we just gain so much life all the time. All right, I do have a jet pistol if I need it, but I'd rather not use that right now. Swing for six into five. They give me a 2k counter. I was hoping he would block with the Momonosuke because then I would attack into that, but he doesn't. He was too smart for that. <clears throat> I think I should have... Oh, I had to swing for six because of Momonosuke. Okay, so swinging in for six here. Let's see what he does. Takes it. Any trigger? Um, I think he did get a trigger that drew him a card. Is that what that Hiyori does? I'm not sure. Okay. All right, here we go. He's smashing in for 10. He's going in big. I'm like, yep, sure. I get a very nice trigger there. We'll pop the Momonosuke. <laughs> Whew. Those triggers, guys, those those go a long way. He plays out a Dracul Mihawk. He's going to swing four into five. I guess he didn't realize, like, hey, that buff lasts until the start of my next turn. So that's a 5k um, Onami. Okay. My turn. Let's see what happens here. We're going to go six, or gonna, excuse me, we're going seven into face. And this guy's got to see the writing on the on, on the wall at this point. Um, okay, we'll see what they do now. So I go ahead and swing for uh, seven here. This should be a 2k, 1k, zero cost 3k. Okay, gain a life, swing it for seven more. And let's see if they have it. They almost, oh, oh, this was a game I forgot. So this person accidentally misclicked. By the way, like I was talking to this guy after the game in the chat. He goes, oh man, I misclicked. Because look, he clearly had enough. He could have gone zero cost 3k or he could have gone 2k, 2k. Like he could have easily gotten out of that. I talked to him after the game. I was like, oh man, I think we might have played another one, but I can't remember. But that was just an unfortunate, almost like a blooper there. Misclick. Okay, Katakuri. <clears throat> All right, here we go. We got a game against Katakuri. And guys, I think we're finally just now just over halfway done. We did 4, 8, 12, 15... We just passed the halfway point, guys. We're, we're halfway done at an hour and 12 minutes. Not bad. Not bad. I expected this video to be like three hours long, so I'm, I'm not upset. But who knows? These these uh, these last games might be longer. Okay, swings in uh, there. I'm going to take it. I get a pair of Sparrow. Uh, I think he set his top life card. Uh, I'm going to swing for five. Going to swing for five. Going to play out a Cracker. Your turn. Let's see if he gets a trigger. Looks like he got a Cracker trigger of his own. Okay, very nice. I had to play mine. But hey, I didn't have to play out. I didn't have to play out my pair of sparrows, so that's nice. Uh, okay, five into five is very annoying. I do end up taking that, replacing a card in my hand with the pudding. He's gonna swing for five. I'm gonna take this. He plays out Kika Nojo. Um, my games versus Katakuri are very fast usually. Like I either win fast or lose fast. That's what I've noticed. Gets a trigger. Does he get another trigger? I think we're waiting on the other trigger here. Or no, maybe not. Okay. All right, here we go. We'll see what happens. Now I can't even push that guy back to my hand, right? Because of the uh, how annoying that that uh, you know the the cracker loses his power at the end of the turn. Unfortunately, uh, w once you go under, once your life becomes more than theirs or equal to theirs, then you, you lose it. They're swinging ten into five. I'm about to give him everything. Here's what I'm feeling. I end up letting him have it. That's fine. And now I'm hoping he'll go for it because it's like, okay, then you must not have had enough to get out of it. It's like, well, no, I kind of I kind of did, right? I had two, four, five. Actually, I had just enough to not get out of that. So I want him to fully tap out here and try to go for game because I'm going for game next turn. He's going to swing for seven. I give him a 2K, 1K, 1K or whatever that ended up being. And uh, now, and, and I, got a, I got a pretty good top deck after that. We'll swing for seven. Okay, attach one. Swing for uh, nine. Yep, GG. Okay. Like I said, my, my games... Whoops, let me get back to the end here. Ah, it's too fast. My games versus Katakuri are usually very, very quick. 
All right, we got a game versus Lucci, guys. We got a game versus Lucci. We go speed 2x, and we are good to go. <clears throat> now, notice this version is with the, the Goa Kingdom version I've been running lately. Uh, it, it runs like two Karasus, two Onamis currently, a few other random things. I'll try to show all these at the end of the video. Uh, but yeah. Th this version is what I'm having the most fun with. And I like how consistent the searches are and the ways you can do combos with the two cost characters and the five cost characters. But I, I just don't think it's as good as Big Mom Pirates, guys. I'm just trying to be honest. I'm just being completely honest here. So I aggressively go down to two life with this deck consistently. Uh, that's It's always my game plan. And that's why I will say this version of the list is not very good versus a nil. <laughs> I'm just telling you guys because I, I'm so aggressively taking life. I mean, I could I could not aggressively take life against a nil and it'd be a better matchup. But, I don't know. That's, it's, it's the whole reason I made this version. Okay, swinging in for seven. Swinging in for seven. I'm going to life this card. And it's going to be his turn. Excuse me. We'll see what they decide to do here. They 2k, 1k. They gave me a, uh, they gave me a Sabo and a, um, a Suru. I will take that. Okay, let's see what they want to do. Do they want to give me this card back? Typically, they do want to give you the card. Well, I mean, it's not that they want to give you the card back. They typically just do. My biggest fear in this situation was from him was for him dropping an Isho. Like, Gecko Moria is not as scary in this specific situation, but Isho is. Losing a card would be awful. Would be absolutely terrible. Like, losing two cards. Okay. I was going to say, I don't think they have many crazy targets in their trash, but I think they do get a Spandine potentially here. Yep, Spandine, and then they're going to remove, I think, the uh, Helmepo, get out a uh, that four-cost Khalifa right there. That thing's pretty cool. Dawn times one. Give all your opponent's characters minus one cost. <clears throat> okay. So right here, sorry guys, I'm letting my I'm, I'm letting my uh, throat, uh, you know, catch up. Starting starting to starting to feel the wear and tear. We're only halfway through. I gotta really I gotta pace myself better, right? Uh, so right there, I played out the the ace from the top of my life, then played a five cost Luffy to pop their uh, blocker. Now I'm going to pull the card back to the top of my life and swing in for 9 and get him down to 1. My only chance at this point of the game is to rush my opponent down. I know that feels terrible. I know it's like, oh, that's pretty lame or something. Like, some people might think that. <laughs> oh, well. You know, it, it is what it is. I don't, I don't make the rules, you know, certain lists. I will say the Lucci matchup is very winnable, but it is not easy. It's, it's probably 40-60. Like, 60 in their favor, 40 in ours. Okay, so they swing in for seven there. I do have to respect these attacks because they still have all their dawn active. If I don't, if I counter, if I don't counter out, they could actually just just win the game. Okay, seven there. Got to counter out pretty aggressively because I want one more turn to try to win this game because I don't think I can win this turn. And and they established a blocker. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can catch him slipping though. That is one way to win games against um, against Lucci is to try to catch your opponent slipping. All right. Here we go. So I think I'm going to swing seven to start the turn off with, and let's see what happens. Okay. So what they should do here is just block, and they're going to regret that, right? They are going to regret that. So we're going to come in for nine here. They're going to lose that last life, and I'm putting Luffy back on top of my life. And honestly, guys, they only have three real attackers on the board. The rest will have to buff up pretty, uh, you know, in a pretty strong way. Swing for five. Okay. Okay. I would have probably gone for lethal this game, guys. Like, I would have, or this turn. I would have probably gone at least five. Like, I would have gone more than five. I don't know how to say that. I would have gone for more than five. Okay, swing for five. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to take this, but now I'm okay because they only have two attacks left, right? They can only attack two more times. Swing for five. I get a 2k counter, and then they'll probably swing for nine here and establish like a... Uh, Okay, we'll take that every single time, right? We, we will take that every single time. Getting Hey, that's why you run these triggers, guys. And that's why sometimes you run the gamble. You run, the, you know, the, uh, the the slot machine to see if you can get through. Okay, so let's see what happens here. I was going to say, I think there's only one way to do this. Uh, there's two ways. Number one is to swing as wide as possible. And the other way is just to go slam Luffy and swing 11. Good luck. You got it or you don't. And that's what I should have done, by the way. Just so, just so everyone is aware, what I should have done was just slam Luffy and swing 11. But here's what I decided to do instead. I'm going to swing 6. This should get a 2k counter out of hand or a blocker. Okay. That seems good. 
Now we're going to go for seven. Watch this, guys. This is a this is a tricky uh, tricky turn here. Okay, I'm going to push that back. Go plus two here. This should get straight through his um, his blocker. And now, play out the Luffy. Swing seven, and basically you have it or you don't. He had no counter left in hand. So what I should have done though, because think about it, he had two blockers to stop two attacks. Right? That was not going to ever happen. So he only had to block one 7K there, and then he gets out of it. Whereas, like, okay, why didn't I just swing for 11? So I will say that was somewhat of a play mistake. That game shouldn't even have been that close as it was. Okay. Nami. We got two games versus Nami, guys. If you guys are wondering how this deck does against uh, Nami, just a straight-up control, um, you know, mill deck, you'll get a chance to see right here. And this is the version we just saw, actually, against the uh, Luchi. I think this might be a slightly different version, because I do, you know, tweak cards here and there every now and then. Because um, a lot of these games are not recorded on the same day, right? Like, I'll record, like, three or four games here, three or four games here. You know, it all, it all depends. Uh, but, yeah, this is the same version, the Goa Kingdom version. Uh, I start off with Garb. I play out Makano to see if I'm going to get any help from the, top of my, uh, from the top of my life cards. I did not see, and I can't remember now. I'm going to play out the Ace here. Okay. Karasu against Nami is gross, guys. It is absolutely disgusting. Okay. So I'm just establishing a board right now. I'm not attacking at all whatsoever. No attacks going on yet. Okay. Time to start putting the Karasus down because I'm only going to have five spots on the board, right? So we'll uh, go. So, so right here, hang on. I'm trying to do a little bit of math in my head. I'm like, all right, let me go six into four here. He only has five Dawn active. And I'm going to have a six, seven, seven, and then it'll be my opponent's turn. Okay, they counter out. Very good. We'll swing seven into four. This is going to require another Gum Gum Giant Gavel or, or some type of like Love Love Beam, Arabesque Brickfist. Seven more into four gives me the blocker. And then I, I probably should have swung for five, to be honest. I don't think it would have hurt to. Okay, they play out the uh, the Margaret plus the uh, Kaya. Not, not too scared about that play, to be honest. Okay, because now I should be slamming down the um, oh, Karasu first, swing for seven into four. Honestly, I think I should have just played out the Karasu first. Okay, I do it now. Whatever. You know, it is what it is. Maybe that would have changed this play if I hadn't. So now seven into three. That is a plus 4,000, right? So, so I am 4,000 over his, um, his health with these attacks. Or excuse me, I'm 3,000 over. I can't even... Oh, oh. Oh, he did, um, what's it called? He actually used uh, White Snake there, excuse me. And guys, I'm getting a lot of cards out of his hand at this point, right? A lot of cards. He's down to four life. He has four cards left in hand now. After drawing for the turn, he's going to Sanji's pull off, get down a blocker. But he has five Dawn left for the turn. So now it's going to be seven. Drop your power down to four. He's going to, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, snake Dance his uh, Kaya back. I'm... I'm swinging sevens into three now. These are very hard to get out of. Okay. Let's see what happens here. I'm just going to keep going sevens, guys. It's working out just fine for me. Sevens has always been the way for me, and it, and it ends up being more at the very end when you have all the dawn left. So now it's going to be nine and then nine. Okay. He'll probably hit like a uh, some, something here. I mean, you don't want to go down to one. with. I think he saw about nine, 18 cards left in deck. Yeah, the, the game's pretty much over at this point. He just had to drop four cards to get out of that attack. So right here, yep, smash in, you're down that, and your turn. He did get a draw two trash one trigger, I believe. Okay. All right, and now it is my opponent's turn. They play out Kaya, draw two trash two, they play that out, and I just don't see how they're supposed to survive this, this turn. I don't see it. I'm going to swing seven into four. This is going to get a, two, a 4K counter out of hand. Swing seven into three. Now it's going to require more than that. And here we go. Now it's just... Sevens on sevens on sevens. It's going to be seven, seven, nine, nine, just like last time. I swing seven here. Okay. They're white snaking back up to normal, but they only have two dawn left, right? That's the problem. So seven more here. They should be able to get out of one more attack. Actually, one more because I'm going to put everything on this last one. All right. And GG. That was a fun one. Swing for 13. <clears throat> Don't forget to use your leader effect for the final attack, right? Uh, anyway. Okay, now let's, we got one more game of Nami. Okay, let's go full screen here. Let's go uh, speed 2x. 
I will say most decks that run red have a pretty good matchup into Nami. Just so everyone's aware, red counters Nami yeah, pr pretty decently. Okay. And this is not a great pool. Like, notice this pool that I have here, guys. Like, this is this is by no means a good pool. Okay. The Karasu's good, but nothing else is, right? I don't have any big bodies, like 7k bodies like last time. Um, I need to use my Makano here. So I'm going to swing for 7 because he only has one. One Dawn active. I'm going to Makano. Okay. <clears throat> so I do see a, um, a Luffy on top. I will be able to cheat that into play next turn with my uh, two-cost guy. All right, they play out Kaya. Seems good. I'm going to go ahead and pop that Kaya with my guy here. Even though I really wanted to get that Luffy, I, I could not risk him bouncing back Kaya's. I don't know. Maybe I should have waited one more turn. Okay, I just keep getting these cards off the board. I'm trying to draw to my five-cost 7k aces and, and more Karasus. Okay. We'll see what happens here. My opponent is on 8 Dawn. They're probably just going to... Yeah, they just pass it back. That's fine. Uh, right here, I don't want to lose any more life. I I'm at the life that I need. I just go ahead and play out 9 Dawn's worth of, of bodies. Uh, a 4K and a, a 4 cost and a 5 cost. They play out Apis. They're trashing cards from hand to try and fix their hand a little bit. Seems good. They got a Sanji's Pilaf from that. Draw from that. Uh, Apis in the right hands. Like, this guy knows what he's doing. All right, here we go. I get an ace. That's, that's what I wanted to see, right? Like, this is what I wanted to see. Yep, play that out. Play out the Karasu for the Garp. And then we can start attacking uh, pretty much now. Six and a four. That's a good start. White Snake. Okay. Into... Uh, and then I pass it. I'm not going to let him have the free one cost cards. Guys, that's why I go 2,000 over. If you only swing 1,000 over, what ends up happening... So I'm going to swing eight and a four, by the way, so, it's, so it gets past a 4K counter. White Snake... Uh, will get them out of whatever they need and it'll give them like okay how do i say this yes if you swing for six and a five white snake does like have to spend more than just white snake but it doesn't matter because instead of using white snake if you swing six they're going to use a, a, a rubber band of doom or, or a uh, desert spot of. i'm just always going to swing two over yeah it's just forcing every card out of their hand okay and then we'll swing eight might as well seven eight doesn't matter okay they're going to play out a kaya Let's see how many cards are left in their deck. I wasn't paying enough attention. They swing five and a five. I'm getting 1k counter. My turn. Here we go. Always start your turn off with the cross to attack because that's what's going to force everything. Eight and a four. Let's see if he has another. He does. Okay. It looks like he does not have another white snake. That white snake has been saving him big time because now I'm coming in for. Th these are basically 9k attacks at this point, but I'm only having to invest one dawn. So it makes it worth it because it's 9k's across the board at this point. Oh, man, you're in trouble now, bud. Yep, 8 and a 4. Let's see. He's got a uh, Love Love Beam or Love Love uh, Melody, whatever it's called. And he has to give me a Desert Spot Up. I'm like, all right, but well, I've got two more attacks left. We'll swing 6 and a 4. We'll push this guy back, and then we'll come in for 8. And that was a good game. So, like I said, um, I didn't see how many cards were left in their deck at the end of that game, or, or the first game for that matter. But I don't know how else to say it, guys. It's just... It's it's like one of our best matchups is Nami. So if Nami starts running away with it in in your uh, in your area, just uh, start running Green Blue Zanji or start running Red Yellow Sabo, and I think you'll be pretty happy with the results. It's still going to require uh, player skill. You still have to pilot the, the deck correctly, and every now and then they they get a perfect fool. But hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so instead of swinging for five there with my Garp, I'm just going to play another Garp out and fix my hand. Now notice I'm running a. Uh, this is OP08.5. I'm playing against Purple Black King. I've got the 5 cost 6k rush, uh, excuse me, um, uh, ace in my hand. And I'm about to develop him right now. I'm going to swing for 5. I'm going to develop the body. And now he can't KO this character. Uh, well, unless he can KO it twice in one turn. Uh, that card is very solid. Okay, they play out Shiki. Let's see what they do now. They're, they're uh, using Queen to fix their hand. <coughs> excuse me. They're going to swing 5 and a 5 here. I don't want to go too low for no reason because he still has one more attack. Swing 6, I could take this one. Okay. And now let's see what we do here. I did get a Shanks. We will take that. All right. Now it's time for fireworks, guys. I have an ace in my hand and everything. So, so we're going to swing 7. We're going to swing 7. 
We're going to push this card back to life and swing eight. He gives me a 2K, 2K. I'll swing two and a two. Your turn. <laughs> Guys, that was a gross turn. He swings two and a two uh, to return the favor there. Swings in for five. I take the ace here. He plays out 10 cost Kaido. Guess what? My guy doesn't die from that. My guy can't be KO'd uh, unless it's, you know, twice in a turn. He can get KO'd in battle, but not from effects. He can do minus 2,000 for the turn to, to survive it. Okay, so right here I'm trying to just close the game out because I don't I don't want to mess with this Kaido. You know what I mean? I don't want to mess with this Kaido all day. So right here I give him... So I kind of messed up the order there. Yep. So pause. Let me explain something real quick. Um, I will explain this really, really quick, guys. I should have swung... I shouldn't have swung with my leader first. I should have attached one dawn to my leader, play out the, the five cost 7k ace, swing at face... Um, Attach one dawn to my leader, push him back to life, give plus 2,000 to that ace, swing eight, play out my uh, two cost ace, pull back the 7k, attack for seven, and, and then attack for nine. So I did mess that up a little bit. Okay. I always try to at least uh, tell you guys when I mess stuff up like that. Okay, we got a game versus purple Kaido. Okay, we got a game versus purple Kaido here. All right. Notice my hand, guys. This is that funky deck from earlier with all the, uh, with like, just all kinds of... I think this might be odd. I think this this uh, deck might be called Odd Curve or something like that. Or it might be a film version. I can't remember. Yeah, and I, it doesn't... Like I said, it, see how it just says Purple Kaido Zero? I have no idea what version of the deck this is, unfortunately. I play out the uh, two-cost Luffy to start the, the to start my turn off with, going second. Then I did the Zoro, swing for, swing for six, then play out the Zoro. And now it's like, okay, I'm just going to keep fixing my hand, I guess, with these little searcher guys. Okay, attach one here, smash in for seven. Guys, watch this deck go, you know, go real fast. Swing for five, he gives me a 1K, play out Shariah. Now I'm blocking whatever you swing with if I have to. They play out a queen. They are ramping Dawn like crazy, guys. They're already at 10 Dawn or nine Dawn. Okay, swing six into six. Sure, just give them a, give them a 2K counter, that's fine. All right, let's see what they do here. Now, even if they try to swing everything into my Zoro, I can just use my uh, Shariah and get around it. All right, we'll see what they do here. They trash my top lifeguard. Okay, they gained a li they gained a Dawn back with the uh, the Captain Kid and gained a Dawn with Oni Oni uh, Onigashima. So we'll swing seven into five here. He turns his um, his queen sideways. We will take advantage of that to the best of our ability. Okay, then we're going to life this guy. We'll go plus two here. We'll swing six more into him. I'm just eating cards out of my opponent's hand right now. That's all I'm trying to do. Now we're going to swing seven into it. He, he finally lets it go. I'll play out back rat. <clears throat> and now my guy is a 6K or a 5K um, until, the, uh, until the start of my next turn. Okay, so he's going to swing for six here. I can just use my back rat to trash a card and give him minus 2,000 or give my, give my guy plus 2,000 and he passes back. All right, so now now it's time to just kind of keep filling the board out, I think, and just try to try to win the game, right? There's there's not a whole lot I can do here, so I push back the the chopper blocker. I don't know if that's the best play or not, but we did it anyway. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna swing for six, and then I'm gonna swing for two more sixes with uh with um my Luffy's swing or swing fives, excuse me, swing five. He gets a uh, he gets the one cost event. Okay, swing for five more probably, or I guess seven. Okay. I put that guy back, and then I swing for seven. <clears throat> I'm trying to be as, aggress as aggressive as possible here, because I don't really have a lot in my hand. I need like a Shanks. Like the, I need a 10 call Shanks right now. And this guy's trying to just get rid of all my life cards by using his uh, leader effect. Five into five. I don't know. I, I don't think I should save that card here. Yep, let that go as well. I want him to attack into my life. I want to start drawing these cards back. He's going to pop my Gastino, but he should have popped my back rat, in my personal opinion. It's just a more useful card to me. Okay, he does a top five search. And guys, I'm in, I'm in a little bit of trouble here. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, you know what? I think it's time to just go for game, right? I'm like, wait a minute. Let, let me do a little bit of math here. So I'll go for um, 10. And then he takes that. And I'm really debating on whether or not I should attack here. Yeah. I think I should have. I'm going to be honest, guys. I think I did that wrong. I think I should, should have gone for 9 and 9. Because that's what I could have gone for. I'll play out Gastino. Try and go for it next turn. Because I'm in no um, jeopardy of losing right now. So it's like, I'll, I'll just try to go for it next turn. 
He swings for seven. Yes, I'll take these cards back. Um, 5K attack, I need a counter out of that. Okay, I'll take that one back. He swings for five. I think I should block here. I don't remember what happens, but I think I should block. I get a 2K counter. So I think he's about to drop the 10 cost, nine cost. Yeah, so, so I definitely should have blocked right there. But that's okay. Now I can block this one if I want to. But actually... It's almost like there's no point, right? Because I could just go seven here and then everything else. Oh yeah, he's in trouble now, right? Like I think the game's just over because he just he doesn't have a blocker. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing math for right now. I think I should I should just stick to the seven strategy, guys. Just go seven, seven, and then whatever is left. Seven, seven, push this guy back. Nine. Yep. No way to get out of that unless he unless he actually had a blast breath like he was threatening with that one done. All right, good game. That was a fun one. Next next up, we got Raju. Guys, we're doing good. We only got, we got this Raju game and then like two, four, six, eight left. We're, we're kicking butt, man. This this is, we're going at a good pace, going at 2x speed. That's the way to go. I'm going to take a quick sip of my water while this game gets started. Okay, here we go. They get the stage start. I see a seven cost in the trash. That's not what I want to see. That's never, ever what I want to see. 2x speed, we're good. Yeah, Porsche, play out the four cost, of course. This is one of the most toxic starts in the game for me, personally, guys. Seeing that stage into Porsche, into this guy. It is just pure toxicity. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not trying to complain. I'm not trying to complain. I'm just having a little bit of fun right now. But man, I can't stand that. I absolutely cannot stand that seven cost Kiji guy. He is just so strong. So I popped the Porsche with the Sabo. It cost me a life to do that. Um, but now I at least have a body on the board I can start competing with. And let's see what my opponent does. Okay. They're, they're thinking, okay, Porsche, rinse and repeat. Are they just going to do it again? I think I remember this game. No, they get a raise you. They get a raise you here. <clears throat> They get the Raju out, fill up their hand. They're gonna swing for six, guys. Raju is a good deck. Raju is a very strong deck. Uh, I remember this game. I'm not gonna spoil the ending, but it's it's a little bit disappointing. So I'm gonna swing for seven into seven here. I'm like, all right, let me try to start eating up some cards from his hand. Swing seven into seven. So, so and then swing eight into seven. So everything he just did last turn, I kind of negated because he drew three cards with his Raju from from the Raju character and and, and leader. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I kind of erased that entire turn and went up a dawn, and now my guy's 8,000 power on the board. Guys, that Sanji is going to pull his weight here. Like, that Sanji, because this guy keeps going face like this, five at face, five at face, five at face, you know, like, this is just crazy, man. I'm like, good night, dude. Like, I'm having trouble keeping up with this. Any anyone would, right? Anyone would. Okay, I'm going to take that, and now he's going to probably play this guy. Yep, attack there. I'm at least going to be able to pop his, um, his Reju. And the whole time I'm thinking, okay, am I about to just lose the game right here? Because I wasn't sure if he had another seven cost guy in his hand or not, in his uh, trash or hand. Excuse me. I'm like, dude, this is not looking good, bro. This is not looking good. I'm, 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 this whole time I'm thinking, I'm just going to lose. I'm about to just lose the game. But watch what happens here, guys. It is so important to make sure you do things correctly. Okay, it is so, so important to make sure you do things correctly in this game. I should have swung for nine there, by the way. That would have been doing things correctly. Oh, no, excuse me. I have one more attack. Excuse me. I have one more attack. I was hoping I'd just win the game right here. I was hoping he didn't have enough. I'm like, okay, I guess he's got it. So if that's the case, no problem. We'll swing nine into there, and hopefully he doesn't have it. And then it's, and then it's uh, my turn. The only saving grace I have right here is this guy's bad math. <laughs> he goes five in. I'm going, yep, block or pass. Maybe he was trying to get me to waste a counter. Swing in for seven, counter out. And right here, guys, what he should have done was swung for eight with his Akiji, and then he wins the game. But hey, that's his mistake, not mine. He doesn't he doesn't know it's in my hand. For you know, for all he knows, I could have had another like a uh, card you know, like, like another 1k in hand or a 2k counter in hand. Um but right there, guys, since he couldn't get through at that point, of course, I was going to win on the crack back because it was going to be my favorite, all sevens. Okay, yeah, and, and, and some. 
All right, we got one game against Red Purple Law. Let me go 2x speed here. Okay, and we're good to go. Let me make sure it uh, actually, you know, I always like to make sure it actually works. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is a matchup we won't have to worry about anymore. But I will say this, guys. Our Red Purple Law matchup was fine. Like, I had no problems with the Red Purple Law matchup. I'm not saying that I won every game, but I felt comfortable into the games. So right there, I aggressively counted out of the 8k attack because he wants to get me down to 2 life as fast as possible to to punish me with with uh, Kid and Killer. At the same time, that plays around his 4-cost uh, 5k counter um, Purple Blocker Law. Okay, he's got a 5 dawn turn here. It goes up 6 dawn with ramping with the um, the uh, Bon Carré. I get a really nice trigger there. Not complaining about that. Uh, and right now, now that I have this card in play, it's time to just always cash in on this card. So swing for 7. He counters out. That's fine. I'm going to push it to life. I should have pushed it to life first. That's fine. Play out the other Kikinojo. Absolutely. And then push this back to life. Plus 2k there. Your turn. That's the thing about Kikinojo, and notice this is like a Land of Wano trigger version with all kinds of shenanigans. It's got Kid and Killers. I think this is just a, a good all-around version or something. I don't think it's an actual type uh, type version, but, but it does have smoothies, so maybe it is. Maybe it's like full triggers, full rush with Land of Wano support. Um, but, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. But I will say this. If you can get the Kikinojo loop going early, it is devastating guys it is so de look he just decided he wasn't going to attack me like it's like dude what do you mean you're not going to attack me okay here we go he has nothing to attack me with for the for the uh bon Carres, by the way there's no card on my board for him to even target that's not more than zero power he'd lose power so right here i'm trying to uh do this right where i can actually get the kid and killer going i'm gonna swing for eight let's see what he does he should take this but no, okay, 2K, 2K counter out. Very nice. I'll push this card back to life. And now it's my opponent's turn. I've got a blocker on the board. It's not a big blocker. It's only 6K right now. He can very easily remove this with like a Gordon. But hey, if he's got Gordon, he's got Gordon. Or a, or a raise max. Swing five here. I take that. I'm, I'm, I'm still daring this guy to attack enemy. I, I want the Kikinojo, right? Like, please, like play, let me play out the Kikinojo. Because he can only get rid of one character a turn. So if he does get rid of my Kikinojo here, I still have my 6k counter, uh, 6k blocker. Okay. Right now I'm thinking, okay, you know, he still has one Dawn active. I go ahead and take this. Now his Kitten Killer's online. He's probably going to play out the Raise. I wouldn't be surprised if his last two cards was like a Raise Max plus, you know, uh, <laughs> Kitten Killer. But no, it wasn't. It, it, I think he does have a Kitten Killer. No, he has a Raise You. That's actually even better in this situation to draw two cards. Seems good. Okay, my turn. So now it's time to do a little bit of cleanup, right? You know, you know, clean up, clean up everybody everywhere, right? Wasn't that the the uh, old song they used to sing in uh, preschool? I can't remember what that was from, uh, but here we go. It's time to get that card off the board. He can have life. I don't really care about that. Okay, so swing seven into there. Now I am still going to push this Kikinojo back to life here. Yep, and then I'm going to smash in for eight into the... Um, yeah, I got. I need to swing. I've got two more attacks, so I'll swing six into one. I'll swing eight into or eight into face. I don't agree with that. Uh, so I should have gone into the body. There's absolutely no other way around it. There's no way around it. I should have gone eight into the Trafalgar Law, in my personal opinion. Okay, because now they got to draw an extra card. They have an extra body on the board. I don't understand why I even did that, to be honest. So they so they attack in. Oh, that's right. So that I could get the Kikinojo back into 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 field into the field. I still like the idea better of attacking into his uh, Trafalgar Law, though. Okay, they're going to bottom deck my Kikinojo, but I'm not, you know, I, I'm not really, at this point in the game, it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, they're going to bottom deck it, playing that out. They played out a Zoro, then they bottom decked my guy. They're going to be playing out something else here, I think. We'll see what they get. Or maybe they didn't play anything out, or maybe they played out the Zoro. I, I lost I lost uh, track of what they were doing. Swinging for five. I get a um, smoothie there, but I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to keep this 1k counter. I decide not to. They swing it for five. I have to take it. I don't have a choice. And here we go, guys. This is this is a tough situation here, to be honest. I don't know why I don't just go for the board and just gain life this turn. Like, I feel like that's the way to go. Just gain some life. I have 10 Dawn. I can literally put Smoothie back into life if I want to. 
Uh, right here, I almost swung for uh, five. That would have been embarrassing. I'll swing for eight first. This should pump up my kid and killer. We'll swing for seven. He'll probably try to counter out of this because it's a yeah, it's a, it's a comfortable two K one K. Now I'm going to swing for seven more, but I'm going to push this card back. I'll put the blocker up here. I'll swing in for seven. Nice. Get the kid and killer back. <laughs> Now we'll play him out again. Swing for seven. That's a nice little smooth interaction there. And now I'm going to swing for seven more and hope he doesn't have enough to get out of eight. Uh, seven and eight. Yeah, there's no way, right? Seven. Well, maybe. I guess potentially. So potentially he could have gotten out of that, but it was very, very unlikely. That was a fun game there. I could have played that way safer at the end. Like, I could have easily buffed up my blocker where he couldn't bottom deck it with a raise max like that and just smashed his board. Just completely demolished his board. But, but the thing is... <clears throat> excuse me the thing is um i have no counter in hand so i don't know M maybe maybe not it's kind of hard to say all right next up we got a game against marco okay let me go 2x speed and we're good to go all right we're, we're making good progress guys we only got six games left after this we're, we're really kicking butt here this is this has been one heck of a marathon this should easily be my longest video um because I do plan on going over the decks at the end of this, guys. I'll have an entire part of this where we go over the decks. Don't worry. This might end up being a three-hour video. This might end up being a three-hour video. Okay, swinging in for five here. I got a double, triple, quadruple check, guys, that this speeds up so we, we make it out in one piece tonight. Okay, so swing in for five. All right, play out the, uh, I play out the Ivan Kov. I choose not to use the effect. I, I just don't like this card. I don't know what it is. And people, people are way better at using it than I am. Uh, this is a Whitebeard Pirates version of the list, by the way, guys. Like, yes, it does have Satori, it has Ivankov, it has Rayleigh in it, but this is mainly a Whitebeard Pirates version of the list. I just didn't see the Ezo Searcher to start. <clears throat> okay, they've got 10 cards in their hand. They've got quite the grip there. Swing for six, I'll take this. I do want to go down to two life pretty, uh, pretty quickly here. We'll swing for five. I think we're still just going to go ahead and play out the ace. Yeah, just a tempo ace, even though I don't get to rush. It's still a 5 cost 7k, you know what I mean? It, it has no counter, so it's not doing anything for me in hand. Now, technically, technically, if he bottom decks this with like a red rock right here, I'd be very sad. But then that means my 7 cost and 8 cost guy have that much better of a chance to survive on the next round, on the next turn. They play out the ace there. Okay, seems good. They're going to swing for 6 and 6 here, so I'm going to give them a 2k counter, but I'll take the first one. Ends up being a trigger. I'll trash a. Uh, I'll trash the other Satori to play it out, and then I'll 2k counter out of this one with my uh, Jozu. Excuse me. <clears throat> and in this situation, it's time to just eat up the board. Yep, six in there. Like I said, I'll just 2k counter out every single time. All right, and now it is time to go eight into six. He's got seven cards in his hand, right? Eight. Excuse me, eight cards in hand. Let's see what happens here. He gives me a 2K and a 1K. Very good. We'll push that card back, and now we'll swing eight more into six. <laughs> you guys see where this is going, right? He's like, all right, yep, yeah, I don't want no more of that. So I play out the ace again. We're coming in for seven. We're coming in for nine, or well, five, and then we're coming in for nine. I'm just going all out here, because next turn he does get his uh, seven dawn turn. I, or, excuse me, his eight dawn, I guess, technically. I probably should have played around Gravity Blade Raging Tiger, to be honest. But, you know, oh well, it is what it is. He does he does end up having it, of course. Um, and that's not hard to believe. He went through Assange's pull-off. He was doing his leader effect. <clears throat> okay, he smashes into my, my uh, Ivan Cobb. I don't really care about that card. It worked as a blocker in the end anyway. And he has no follow-up because he has no Dawn left. So right here, I think I go ahead and play out the Edward Newgate. Uh, the Edward Newgate is actually really nice here. First of all, I'm going to come in for eight. He he has zero life now. He has to play a blocker now, or he's you know going to get hit for eighteen, you know, or fifteen if he gets my he gets rid of my guy. Uh, but but the thing is, like the reason I really like the Edward Newgate here is I can combo him this next turn with my Rayleigh to pop an eight thousand power or less. Like I feel like that's very powerful. Okay, I'm just playing with the Dawn down there right now. <laughs> Okay, just wait on, waiting on my opponent. He's got 10 cards in hand or 9 cards or something. He's just trying to figure out what he wants to do. He's probably setting his top life card to be uh, the 9 cost white beard, and then he's going to play out the 9 cost Sanji. That is what gives this deck so much strength, the, uh, the actual red-blue Marco deck. It, it, that is the way to go. Okay, we'll see what he does. Minus 2,000 there. Just waiting on my opponent now. 
that, yep, they do exactly what we said. Seems good. So right here in this situation, guys, I think, okay, he's going to attack in. I, I don't have any any chance to survive this next turn because he's going to have so many. He's, he's going to be able to swing for like 11, 13, 15, and he just gives up. What I was going to say was my only chance here is to go for lethal. Like there is no, there is no uh, bunkering down or anything like that. So this turn I was going to swing for what I was going to try to do. Like in, in my head, okay, hear me out. I was going to swing for seven, seven. And then that would have been five plus two is seven, and I have three left, and then eleven. So it was going to be seven, seven, eleven, uh, and that would have won me the game. But I think looking back, I should have just gone eighteen, just swing eighteen. I, I don't have any other chance. He's at he's at uh, seven thousand power for the turn. So anyway, good game. All right, next up we got a game versus Red Yellow uh, Bello Betty. Okay, two X speed. Here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, Bella Betty, guys. She's pretty mean. This this leader's pretty uh pretty gruesome. This deck can really pop off. I I was I was I will have to link that in the comment section below for anyone interested. If you have not seen my uh most my it was a very recent video. I think it was like two or three days ago on uh, Red Yellow Bella Betty. If you have not seen that game yet, you, you need to check that game out. <laughs> or not not game. Excuse me, that video. It that this deck pumps guys red yellow bellow betty absolutely pumps okay they play out a uh, cracker here they can buff uh trigger characters with their leader effect i'm gonna swing for five let's see what he gives me he's got six cards in hand i need to establish a character this turn i will be popping that cracker with my sabo for sure <clears throat> okay get rid of that and i lose the, the, the top card of my life or I, you could choose top or bottom it's just a coin flip and i end up getting karasu not the worst thing in the world Okay, they cheat out a uh, Koala with the Emporio Ivan Cobb on play. And now they're probably going to swing for six. And honestly, I think I think I should have countered out of that. That was that was very, very risky. But hey, that's all right. You know, you do what you got to do. I'm going to swing for six. This is a weird turn right here where I have to watch what I have to do here. This one, this is an ugly turn. I'm going to have to swing for seven. I drop them down to two life, I believe. Or they might counter out. I don't remember this part. But then I end up playing out that uh, Sabo. I'm pretty sure I, I play out that Sabo or the Ace. Okay. Just seeing if they got a trigger or not. It's always scary swinging into uh, Bello Betty. She might have a trigger. All right. Well, oh well. Here we go. <laughs> you know, anyway, just going, just, just going face. Never mind. So I was going to, if I did not get a trigger there, the, uh, the, the um, Satori, I was just going to pop the Imperial Ivankov and then gain a life for the turn. You see what I'm saying? In fact, I would have gained life first with the 7K Sabo, and then I would have popped that Sabo off so I could still, still uh, have the chance to get a, a uh, trigger. Okay, here we go. They're going to trash Karasu and give everything plus 2,000. Uh, three characters plus 2,000. Okay, five. I need to get out of that because that one's easy. I think they just kind of give up almost here. Like, they're just like, okay, I have to go for this. And it's like, yeah, you, you do, but at least choose the right order. Okay, swing for six. That's a 2K. And now I only have to block out of one more. And I have one, two, three. You saw me count in hand. So now I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, I just grabbed whichever card had a, had a counter on it. So one, two, three, four, five, six K counter in hand. So basically I'm going to take this next hit no matter what, just to force him to keep attacking into me. And I could also potentially get a trigger as well. Okay, so swing for nine. Let's see what he does. If he goes, if he goes nine into seven, I'm just going to counter out of that. Yep, we'll take this. It's an ace. It was not a trigger, but that's okay. That's a, that's another rush card. That's fine. But I already had another ace in hand. So we'll go 2K, 2K, or 1K, 1K, 1K. And they probably thought I was trying to be in there. No, I was actually just trying to choose the correct thing because this next turn, it was going to be swing sevens all day, every day, like usual guys, where it's like seven on leader, seven on ace, seven on guard, seven on the other ace, you know, just uh, lots of, lots and lots of sevens. All right, we got a mirror match. We got a red yellow Sabo versus red yellow Sabo here. I'm going to take a quick sip of my water, guys, while this game gets uh, started off. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, depending on the version of the deck my opponent is playing, which I have no idea what they're playing yet, they have not played a single card, 
Uh, that Charlotte Linlin could be a real game changer. Okay, I'm going to swing five in here. I'm just going to test the water, see what they give me. They take it. Any triggers? No triggers. Okay, so we're going to play this guy out, and I'm not going to swing with my characters yet. Because he didn't develop any bodies on the board, I'm actually going to try to maintain an advantage against him in that way. Where it's like, okay, I don't want you to attack into my characters to gain anything back. I'm going to try to just win the board here. They play out a Nami. That is the one cost, 1k starter deck Nami that can attach a Rested Dawn to a character or leader. Okay, let's see what they do. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Hiyori here, they're going to set their top life card. I don't know what it is, and honestly, I don't even care. It's like, okay, right here, dude, we're, we're, we're actually just going to start attacking. I go ahead and pop the Nami there, because whatever I hit from their life, they're not going to be able to gain. Like, I'm not going to be able to pop it with the Gadatsu. You know what I mean? I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. I think I'm going to swing six into face with just my leader. Actually, I don't even swing my leader. I just pass turn. Because, that, remember, they set their life card. So whatever that is, I don't really want to deal with that right now. I'd rather wait and deal with it on the next turn. Because next turn, I can just plop down a seven cost Linlin and make them give me life or make them lose life. <clears throat> okay, and right there, keep them at three life. That means they don't get to use that effect. All right, let's see what happens here. So right here, I think it's time to just go ahead and plop down the... Uh, okay, first we're going to swing for seven with double attack. We'll see what they want to do here. They take it. They're going to be able to pop my Para Sparrow or my Cracker if they want. I, I would have popped Para Sparrow to stop an attack. They get a Dinjiro. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that, di didn't expect that, to be honest. That, that was not what I expected. Not that it's a bad thing. Okay. So right here, they get Neka Mamushi. Seems good. I'm going to push that card back. We're going to swing for seven. And guys, the uh, we're not done yet. We are We are not done yet. We're going to swing for seven. <laughs> Guess what I'm going to play next? Kitten Killer. Seven more. All right. This should put him at zero. Your turn. Let's see if they got any trigger from it. That's all we're waiting on. I think they got... I don't know what they got. I think they got a trigger, but may maybe not. It's their turn. They drew for the turn. They're going to swing seven into five. <clears throat> um... <laughs> Not really too worried about that, right? I have another one in hand. I'm just gonna let that go. Seven more into the into. Okay, yep. You can have you can have the pudding. Let's see what he has here. Remember that is a seven k. That Paro Sparrow is a seven k. So I will save that card if I have to here. Set seven into seven or seven into five into face here. Okay, we'll take that. Sure. He's got four dawn left. Let's see what he plays. Kidding killer. It's an odd play, isn't it? Like that's a very odd play here. So he's probably gonna go nine into seven. Right, because he was really trying to battle for a board here. Okay, yep, and I'm just going to 2k, 1k, or zero cost, uh, 3k to get out of that. Now it's going to be, now we're going for game. We're going seven into face. Let's see what he gets. If he counters out of this, the game's, yeah, now the game's for sure over. There's no way, this is calculated lethal. Swing in here, and then swing for seven more. Or, well, actually, excuse me, top, top life that, and we'll just make sure. We'll swing for 11. GG. Okay, that was a good one. That was a fun one there. Okay, next game. Another game of uh, Sabo, I believe. Yep, another another mirror match. Um, so that Wano version is not bad at all. It's definitely not a bad version of this deck. But I feel like, I don't know, it needs something else. But I don't know, maybe he just got a bad pool too. It's very possible. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and swing for six here. I, I take it pretty aggressively. I could have easily countered out. I'm going to swing for five into four. I'm playing out Karasu. Trying to generate some advantage early on here. Trying to generate some uh, a board state. Plays Flame Flame Dragon King. Uh, so he knows what all of his life cards are now. He's going to swing six into five. I'm just going to 2k counter out of this one. He's going to play out Kikinojo. Very annoying. I'm going to swing five into five. Let's see if he gives me this. Because I actually don't want to play my... I don't want to attack with my uh, Karasu. I play out the Lucy here. That's kind of fun. Yeah, this card, this card's kind of cool, the Lucy card. It's a lot better when you have like one or two life, I think it is, where he can actually get a benefit, where he can tap stuff down. But I just wanted a six cost 7k on the board. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, he's going to put that on life. Swing seven, seems good. I'm like, oh man, this is annoying. <laughs> this guy's starting to annoy me. 
So I'm trying to see what all he can do this turn. I'm like, all right, let me get out of this 2K, 1K, because he's probably going to swing for 8 at face here with his leader and the, the, the two um, remaining Dawn. But here's where, like, okay, it, it it's 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 not always a great idea to just swing at face like this because now I'm just going to gobble up this board. I'll let you gain life a little bit here and there while I set up the board. That's fine with me, you know, because I can gain life every turn as well. But if I can just keep eating your board up, that's where things can get, you know, th that's where things can go south, basically. Okay, when attacking once per turn, put the top card, uh, the top or bottom card of your life into your hand. Let's see here. I'm going to do that. I draw that card and gain, you know, I basically just drew a card from that effect and swung seven into seven. He gives me a 1K counter. <clears throat> right here, I've got a few decisions I need to make. I've got eight Dawn, so I should have played out the Charlotte Linlin. I don't know what, I don't remember what I do here. I should have played out the Charlotte Linlin and made him decide if he wants to lose a life or give me a life. He probably would have choose to lose one. And then I could have lifed it and gave plus 2,000 to Karasu, swung seven, dropping him to a six. And then I could have swung six more into him. Okay, but I'm just going to life that. That's fine. Go seven into six here. And see, that's what I'm saying. Like, I should have waited and swung six more into him here instead of swinging at face. Okay, but he gave me all his cards. That's fine, too. I've got two life. He only has two bodies. He would have had to get a perfect rush here. And even still, I... Well, no, if he got if he had gotten a rush here, I probably would have been gone. Okay, nine into seven there. That's fine. And ten into seven. Gonna let it go. Unfortunate, but that's, you know, you do what you gotta do. So right here, guys, this is where... Okay, first of all, I'm gonna go in Azuma because I'm at no risk of losing the game right here. I'm going to do a Bello Betty, but I don't think I should have done the Bello Betty there. I actually, I'm not going to pause it, but what I should have done there is played out the Kikinojo, lifed it, and then gone from there. Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe that's not a good idea because he's at so much life, I won't actually get the card. But guys, I went Inazuma, Bello Betty, Ivankov, Morley in one turn. And it's like, okay, your turn. He's going to keep lifing these cards, but I've got bad news for him. I'm going to start swinging with these cards that make him trash cards. Okay, right there. Now it's time to swing in with Inazuma. And I'm about to have this guy in an Inazuma Lin Lin loop. And guys, that's a wrap at that point. It's 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 over at that point. I don't I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, yeah, I should absolutely attach two to Inazuma and swing seven. Uh, yeah, I, I was gonna say, I don't know what my plan is here, and then save the Inazuma. Yeah, there we go. I was, again, I don't know what my plan was right there, but it was a ob obvious, obvious play, completely obvious. Sometimes you try to think too hard, right? You're trying to make uh, like better plays than what you should. It's like, no, just keep it simple sometimes. Okay, I'm going to keep getting these cards back. <clears throat> okay, I think I should play out the, the Inazumas here. That's, that's my plan. Yep, play out Inazuma, play out Inazuma, and guess what, dude? I'm going to gain life every turn. So you swinging with your leader is not going to do enough. Swinging with your leader will not be enough. And I'm slowly... Guys, notice I've gotten like no 2K counters this game when I know I have at least eight in my deck. You know, it's very rare I make a deck that has under eight 2K counters. I should have four Flampes in this list or Hiyori's actually, I bet. And then four um, Koalas. So we'll swing for seven. We're just eating these cards out of his hand. Sure, let's do it like that. Swing for seven. Again, these cards aren't going to his hand. These cards are going to the trash because this is a, a um, banished character. Okay, your turn. And I've, I've kind of got this guy on lockdown, right? Next turn, it's over. Next turn, I mean, unless he gets something really crazy here, next turn, it's probably over. <clears throat> Excuse me. He just passes. I don't know what's in this man's hand, but it, it must not be very good. Swing seven into five. That has banish. Okay, just waiting on my opponent here. He's, I mean, if he can counter, he probably should. Yeah, he's got Flame Dragon King. Seems good. We'll go Bello Betty here. I would snag the Inazuma. Yep, play out Inazuma. Your turn. L life this one. <laughs> yep. Guys, do you see where this is going? This is total lockdown control at this point. Like, I'm going to eat every single one of his life cards with either my 7-cost Lin Lin or with my 4-cost uh, uh, my uh, Inazuma. He can attack into me as many times as he wants to. I'm going to gain one life every turn, bare minimum. He plays out a Cracker. Okay. <clears throat> so that is annoying. The Cracker is very annoying. All right, so let's start going. Let's start attacking. Inazuma. Go. He can't block out. He only has uh, one, one card in hand. So that goes to the Trash. 
I'm going to gain a life this turn if I can help it. Okay, I finally decided it's time to start going for face here. I'm like, you know what? Let's try to just clean this game out here. Let's try to just uh, turn this game off. Okay, I will I will push a card back to life here. We'll give Morley plus two. This should be both cards from hand, and then that should be game. Yeah. Okay. Because it was either going to be both cards from his hand, or it was going to be game. And I think both were either way. All right, that was a fun game. If, if it gets to that point, guys, if you're playing the red, yellow, or excuse me, the, um, what, what do you call it, the uh, Reva Army version, if you can get it to that point where you've kind of stabilized and eaten all their cards up, it, it is a, uh, it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. 2x speed. We got a game against Dofi. Blue Dofi. We got two games against Dofi. Very cool. All right. Let's see what my opponent does here, guys. Let's see what they decide to do. Um, th this is... Okay, they got to go first in everything. They got to go first in everything. I don't know what version of the list I'm running in this one. I don't remember this game. I think I remember the second Dofi game. Um, but this this first one I do not remember. Okay, they're going to attach two to their leader. They're, they set the top card of their deck to a Jinbei. They cheat out of Trafalgar Law. They'll probably pull back the buggy. I would pull back the buggy there as a 2k counter, personally. <clears throat> Okay, and then I take the hit and I get a Paris Barrow. You love to see it. We'll swing five into five. And I think I'm just going to establish a uh, blocker here. Maybe swing five into face here. Let them draw a card, sure. I just don't want them to go under four cards, right? I've, I've got my, uh, my Gadatsu. I want to use that Gadatsu many, many times this game. Keep putting it back into my life and just reuse my Gadatsu over and over and over again. That's the best way to deal with Dofi. Because Dofi's going to play a four cost card like every single turn or multiples. Uh, four, four cost, three cost, two cost, one cost, all the little stuff. Every now and then they'll, they'll drop the ten cost. Okay, seven into five. I should just let this go. I don't remember if I do or not, but I should absolutely just let this go. Totally with the search. Lost two, <laughs> lost two rush cards and a 2k counter. No, that, that was miserable. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that was absolutely miserable. Uh, but that's okay. It happens. So I did get a, uh, they attacked again. I got a trigger smoothie. So right now I can, uh, I can start eating up some cards here. We'll go seven into five. Um, let's see what we do here. I'm not sure what I, why I have my mouse over that. Yeah, it should be five into five here and then five more into five and then play out Gadatsu popping it. Like th there is no other play here in my opinion. Okay, so five into five. This should eat up a card from their hand. They should save this. I think they will probably save this. If not, I'm fine with that too. <laughs> hey, I won't be upset if they don't if they don't save it. Okay. Yep, and now I should just go ahead and play out the Gadatsu or don't. I don't know. Who know I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Who knows? I'm 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 a new player. <laughs> like again, I I don't know why I wouldn't do that. I don't know why I wouldn't just Gadatsu to pop the um the uh what, whatever his name is there, Marshall D. Teach. Because then he just gravity blade, wipes the whole board. I play this out. I'm going to have to trash the zero cost 3k to get it back into play. And now it's like, okay, play out the Gadatsu first, popping it. Hey, I guess it worked out in the end. We got there. Maybe I'm getting tired. That is that is very possible, guys. I could be just getting tired because it's getting pretty late over here at the time you're recording this video, of course. Okay, I swing for six, and they have to 1k, 1k to get out of that. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm feeling pretty good. If they attack into me, I can get this guy back if I want to, or I could just take it and get a 1k counter in hand, play it next turn. I'm not in a huge rush to do anything here. Um, my Gadatsus are, are definitely out of power. They're no longer like what they used to be. Okay, they're going to uh, bounce back the buggy. They can't bounce back a uh, five cost. It can only be a four cost or less. I trash my 2k counter to get uh, this guy. So I could have done a pretty cheeky play here, I think, right, where I basically draw my life card with Flampe, swing seven, double attack, and gone for game here. Or sw I could have swung nine with double attack and gone for game. Okay. Still might, still might have enough. Trying to do the math here. I think I should go like eight, nine, or something like that. I think I can go. So we'll come in for seven here. They take it. Red Rock, I don't care. That basically just told me you don't, you're not going to be able to defend out of this. <laughs> Since he didn't get a counter, it's like, okay, so he's, I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't have enough to counter out now. Okay, good stuff there. We got two more games, guys. We're so close. Okay, next game. We got another game versus Dofi, and then we got one more against Vega. All right, 2x speed. Here we go. 
Um, is it playing? Yeah, it's playing. Speed's 2x. It's, it, we're good. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see who gets to go first this game. I don't remember. Uh, I think they're choosing, actually, so they're probably going to get to go first. Yep, so they get to go first, which is ideal for them. It is ideal for them, but we don't really mind going second. Now, this is running the Goa Kingdom version of the list. So let's see how this goes. They're going to swing for seven. They whiff the top. They just tried to do a blind search, guys. Doing the blind search pays off sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. And I don't know what his ratios are. I don't know what his deck's running. But I know he's got a Gravity Blade Raging Tiger now. That is one thing I know. I'm going to play out a Garp here. I'm going to go very wide, actually. I've got a lot of little characters on the board. I'm going to swing for five. going to swing for five and swing for five here. So I'm going to get three cards out of his hand or I'm going to get some life cards. All right. Just waiting on my opponent here. They give me a 2K counter. I swing for five more. I think I remember this. Yeah, swing, swing there, swing five more. And I think they give me another 2K counter. Look at that. Not ideal. Okay, I've got, I only have two life left, but remember, they don't have anything on the board. Like, I'm not really threatened right now. The thing that makes Dofi strong is when he can fill up his board. I'm not, I'm not worried about him not having a board. Plays out a Jinbei, Trafalgar Law. Now I've got to throw a card to the bottom. I, I, I just throw the Luffy down at the bottom. Swing for six and a five. I don't want to give him that, but I have to give him a 1K, 1K. So that was not fun. Okay, right here. I think I'm just going to pop this Jinbei. It's like, dude, you don't have anything on the board. I'm just going to keep slowing this game down. Swing for five, swing for six. <clears throat> 2K counter. Oh, I'm going to do a search uh, with um, th uh, the, the uh, Three Brothers Bond. And they take it. We do a search. I can only get one card. It was a Luffy. And now it's my opponent's turn. So, uh, you know, in this situation, they need to just play cards. I, I don't know. Like, I mean, th they tried, right? But how did they play out a Jinbei with, like, nothing attached? Like, did I miss something? I don't know. That seems like it's not the right play. Because I know they had a 2k counter in hand. So it's like, I feel like that was not the right play. Playing out Jinbei and not getting anything from it. But who knows? You never know it's in their hand. Maybe they, they just wanted to save the one 2k counter they had. I would have rather just played it. Okay, six costs. Okay, yep. Yeah, so Bo Hancock, make it where my... Uh, <laughs> okay, my Sanji couldn't attack, so I just let it go anyway. And then they bottom decked one of my one cost 2k's, I think. Now I'm just going to get him in the blender. Now, now it's time to just go full blender mode. It's like, all right, drop the ace, swing for seven. And now I'm going to go five and six. We're going to go five with a Garp, six with Sabo. Okay, so pull this back. Or seven, I guess. Seven with um, with the leader, and then five more with Garp. He gives me a 1K counter. Your turn. I've got three life. He only has two bodies. I'm just, look what's in my hand, by the way. Okay, seven and a four. Dude, you can have that card. Now, please attack into me so I can get my ace back, please. <laughs> it, it gets to that point. Like, that's one thing that's funny about this deck. Like, it's like, please attack into me so I can get my card back. Because I, I just want to do that again next turn. Right? Because I'm going to swing for like 9-9 nine, nine this turn or something crazy. Okay. My turn. Here we go. I'm, I'm deciding what I want to do here. Because there is a world where I, where I, you know, actually play out the, uh, the, the Monkey D. Luffy to pop the uh, blocker. And then swing in with Kid and Killer, life it, you know, there, there were a lot of options there. I'll swing eight into eight here. He gives me the blocker. I'm like, what on earth, dude? I mean, I, I didn't see that as the right play ever. But I'm like, you know what? Let me, let me just do this. We're going to play out the ace here. We'll swing in for eight again. I don't... <laughs> I don't understand that play right there for me. I'm like, oh, oh okay. I was going to say, why would I swing to, uh, at the boa after that? But I'm not swinging at the boa. <laughs> We're going face. They gravity blade raging tiger. This game's just over, dude. You know, there's just nothing he can do. It, it's like, okay, bro. <clears throat> Hear me out. <laughs> Hear me out. You don't have a blocker and you have five cards in your hand. Okay. Let's pause. I didn't see what he had trash there, but it's like you have to establish a blocker or you can't win. He probably couldn't win either way, right? Because I do have rushers and I, and I top decked a, uh, <laughs> a Luffy. But still, that was a good one. Okay, we got a game versus Vegapunk, guys. Let me I go full screen here. Go 2x speed. I got to take one more sip of water. We're almost done with this marathon, guys. This is the last game. This has been crazy.
Okay, here we go. So this is running the film version uh, of, of the list. I did experiment with a film version. I know we looked at a few tonight. They get Lilith. I'm not as I'm usually not afraid to attack into Vega Punk. I feel like some people get scared. It's like, yeah, but they'll get a trigger. <laughs> Shoulder shrug. Oh well. Yep, they get a trigger. We might too. Hey, who knows? Not worried about it. Not worried about it. I just know you don't want them to get a lot of life or you're just not going to win the game, right? Because then if they have a lot of life and you have a lot of life because they're not swinging and y'all are just at a stalemate, that's when they drop their Yamatos to pop whatever character they want and get these huge characters down. It just I don't know. It just starts spiraling out of control so quickly. <clears throat> okay, so I take that, whatever it was. I think I just got a trigger for uh, Luffy or something. I missed it. Okay, I get a Gastino here. Probably not the best card against Vegapunk. Excuse me. <clears throat> and they have this very annoying card on the board here, this Luffy. Uh, man, that is rough. But we're okay. I'm not complaining, guys. I'm not, I'm not trying to complain. So I do have a Bear King that says he cannot be killed in battle if my opponent has 6,000 or more uh, power characters in play. So I'm like, all right, okay, we, we got some stuff we can do here. So let's go ahead and uh, bounce that card back to life. So now his uh, Luffy won't do anything, you know, for a while. We'll swing for six. We got two Dawn left. They 2K counter out. I'm like, wow, okay. I'm like, all right, good, your turn. Because, <laughs> you know, what I could have done there was like gain life with the Zoro, uh, buff the, the attack with Zoro, gain life with it, uh, buff the Luffy, attack with that. It's like, now you, you can stay up there. You, you can stay up that life. Okay, he pops that card. I guess he forgot you have to be at two or less life. <laughs> it happens, man. It happens. Dude, my Gadatsu can pop this Luffy right now. Let's go. Pops the Luffy. Doesn't care at all, dude. I'm just, I'm just like, you know what? I don't even care right now. I'm, I'm just going to keep playing. The night's going on. I'm starting to sound crazy, guys. I'm starting to get delusional. Okay, so he gets that. I guess I should have attacked first. But at the same time, I think he, uh, I think there was another one in his trash. The one, the one he uh, messed up on. But hey, this card still doesn't mean anything, right? This card still doesn't matter at all. Uh, talking about the Luffy. Whatever he plays next turn, you see I have my hand, my mouse over right now. Ace, uh, Shanks is, I always call it uh, Shanks Ace for some reason. But Shanks is about to pop whatever this guy plays next turn. I don't care if it's a 10 cost Ace. I don't care if it's a 9 cost Yamato. It does not matter. Swing for 6, so it's probably going to be a Yamato popping my uh, Gadatsu. It's fine. Or, or uh, popping Shura. Oh, okay. So he gets a Katakuri. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, another another one. A another one. All right, here we go. So six and a six. Give me some cards. He only has two cards in hand. So he, he uh, decides to not uh, let that go. Not a big deal. I think it is time to start swinging at life, though. That is one thing that I do think. Maybe I pass. I might pass here because I'm actually starting to start starting to get so much control. Like it's going to start getting out of hand. Things are going to start getting out of hand. It's like, look at my board. Okay, you can have Nico Robin in your life, dude. You, you can absolutely have that. Swing uh, eight, 14 in. Yep, yeah, that's yours. You can have that. And now we will swing six into there. This should be gone. And I, I mean, basically at this point, gave me his last card. I'm like, dude. You realize you realize how this works, right? If if I if I if you let the card go, I attack into your life more and you get to draw more cards. But hey, he can do whatever he wants. Okay? Don't even be upset about it. He's allowed to do whatever he wants to. So right here he plays out the Atlas from, from the life trigger. He's got three cards in hand now, two from the Nika Robin trigger and one for the turn. He's got three life left. My my board's stacked. He's gonna go nine into fifteen. You can have my blocker. Pay one. What's he going to play? <clears throat> Plays out the Atma. Or the, the Atlas. Whatever the name is. And right here, I don't want to waste a Shanks on something like this. You know what I mean? Uh, so swing seven in. I think I might be able to just clean this game out right here. Okay, he does go up to 2k. But it's like, nah, we're, we're going to keep we're gonna keep punching in. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to keep attacking here. Alright, we'll, we'll play this out. I think I play out the Zoro. Swing for seven. Life it. Swing for seven. Okay, he got that guy. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. 
And then I think we just swing 12. Actually, we could just pass here. Yeah. We don't want to give him an extra body. But now he pretty much has to survive. So he has to gain life this turn and play a blocker, and he only has one card in hand. There's no way out of this next one. And notice my Bear King cannot be KO'd in battle. Just like just like Atlas. The, the, these cards cannot be KO'd in battle right now. Because if, if your opponent has more life than you, then Atlas cannot be KO'd in battle, right? And then Bear King says he cannot be KO'd in battle if your opponent has 6,000 power characters. I'm like, okay, now watch this, guys. This part's funny right here. This this part's kind of funny. I'm like, dude, I bet he attacks in. Oh, he didn't. What a loser. No, <laughs> didn't even attack, or didn't even attack into my guy that cannot be KO'd. Swings in for eight into five. The writing's on the wall, dude. The writing is on the wall. He does get a uh, Shaka. That's fine. Um, at this point, we swing for five, right? Because he has no cards in hand. This will get the Shaka. Then we swing for six. He doesn't have any cards in hand. Okay, well, now he does. He gets Lilith. Let's see what he gets from it. Sorry, guys. I'm getting tired. I'm beat right now. This is, We're going on two and a half hours. All right, Lilith is look. I don't know what Lil Lilith is looking for right now, but it, it, I couldn't imagine what would help them, and they just pass GG. So, uh, whoops, let me go back to the end here. Uh, they just pass at this board state. It was game over, right, guys? Because if let's just say they got a 2K counter. Let's say they got a 1-cost 3K counter, right? Or a 1-cost 4K. Say they have, like, El Thor or something, right? It doesn't matter because I'm going to go 12 into face. He uses Shaka, and then I'm going to go 15 into face, or uh, 13 into face with uh, the Monkey D. Luffy on the board. Uh, but really good game. Really good game uh, to my opponent there with Vega. Vega still needs a little bit of love. And it needs a little bit of support, but it's getting there, guys. Uh, Vega Punk is getting there. Okay, well, that was all the games. Now it's time to look at all of those different deck lists, guys. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready for this? Let me move my face over. Okay. So we're going to talk about probably like six or seven of the different deck lists we just looked at. This is the most recent Big Mom Pirates version I was running. Um, the two shanks are experimental. Um, I, I have moved these, excuse me, I think I moved these out, actually. Uh, I'm pretty sure I moved out the Flame Dragon Kings and the Tropical Torments, and I think I moved out the shanks. And I'm pretty sure what I did in the place of them was uh, I put in the uh, Katakuris at four, and I think I put in the Yamatos at four. It was something like this. Uh, in fact, it might have been like minus one here, minus one here, and gone up two koalas. Let me see something. Maybe. Yeah, I think it actually, I think this is probably a little bit closer to what I'm running right now for um, the Big Mom Pirates version. It's hard to say, guys. I've moved it around so much at this point. But I guess all I'm trying to say is the last time I checked, the last time I played, I was trying to go more top-heavy. Because, okay, going putting turn one into turn two Parasparo into turn three, like, you know, I, oh, I was also playing with Gadatsu for a while. But having that nice, you know, one through five curve and then going into seven for Linlin, -Lin, going into nine for Yamato, it is excellent. It is excellent. But it is that top end that basically, basically starts getting you through the game. Because they drop you down to one life finally or down to zero life and you're like, oh man, I'm, you know, I'm screwed. It's like, I'm in deep, deep trouble. Um, yeah, excuse, excuse my language there. Uh, I'm in deep, deep trouble. <clears throat> excuse me. But it's like, okay, now what you can do is drop down Yamato, maybe pop a character, but you'll definitely gain a life. And then you attach the your final dawn for the turn, because that was only nine dawn. Your tenth dawn, you attach to your leader, and you can just put Yamato back into life if you need to. And you're, now you're gaining two life every single turn and swinging for six. I know six isn't like a big number at that point in the game, but it's better than nothing. It's at least, you know, trying to get you back into the game. And that's where I like Charlotte Linlin, because then it's like you can swing for eight, which is a very relevant number. Seven or eight in, in the late game is very strong for your leader attack. And then you're also gaining a life, gaining potentially two life, or your opponent's losing a life and you're gaining a life. Se seems pretty good. Uh, the Kikinojos are nice. Neko Mamushis, good stuff here. Um, this is not... I'm, I'm trying to see, like, okay, we've got a lot of decks to look at, guys. We've got a lot of different decks. Oh, I see. It was I think it was 9Z. I think this is closer to what I was running towards the end, but this one didn't have the um, the uh, Yamatos yet. It was still running the four Gadats. No, it is running Yamatos. Excuse me. This is the list. This is the Big Mom Pirates list I was running. Sorry, guys. That other one was was a was a trick. It was a trap. But this is it. Uh, I'm just running Charlotte Smoothie just because it's a four cost five K with trigger. Uh, it, it does have some kind of it, it has kind of cool synergy where like okay like there's a combo you can do with it right. Where it's like, okay, four calls, 5k, you attack, or hang on, excuse me, I messed up the order there. 
Kid and Killer, swing for seven, life it. And then Charlotte Smoothie, eat your top life card, swing for seven, and then play out that Kid and Killer again and swing for seven more. Like, there, there are things you can do uh, in the list like that or in the deck like that. But generally speaking, this is the Big Mom Pirates list that I was running towards the end. It had the top end Yamatos, the top end Katakuris. <clears throat> and uh, honestly, you probably could go down to like three Yamatos and go up another Lin Lin. Like this. Like you can you can make changes however you want to. Like if you don't have uh, Katakuris, by the way, no problem. Don't be upset about that. Just go, um, what's his name? I almost called him Ace again. Shanks. Like you can just go like this. Like, you could just go up to Shanks. It's fine. No, it's not searchable by Pudding or by Parasparo, but but who cares? Like, it's still... If you just need top end, like, say you only have, like, two Yamatos or something. Well, I don't know. Yamato's pretty cheap, right? But just go up as many Shanks as you can. Whatever top end you're missing between Yamatos and Katakuris, just go up that many Shanks. I would recommend getting this card, though. If you're, if you're really set on Red Yellow Sabo and you want to keep experimenting with them... This card is just so good. I don't care if you're playing Rebel Army version. I don't care if you're playing Goa Kingdom, you know, uh, <laughs> combo version or what. It doesn't matter. Like, this this card is just insane. It just does what it does every time, you know? I, I know that sounds very like, oh, yeah, of course it does. That's what the card does. But it's like, yeah, but it does quite a bit. Uh, but good stuff there. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, we got some more stuff to look at. So that was the uh, Big Mom Pirates version of Red Yellow Sabo. And I do think that this is one of the best versions, if not the best version. Now let's look at what I would consider the second best version. Uh, I called it, I ended up going through a few different versions of it. First we'll look at the original version, which was this, where it was just like all four ofs and then two kid and killer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Notice all these cards like from here all the way to here. And then up into this Sabo, these are all ST13. It's just a straight ST13 package. And then all these cards are just added because they're very powerful. Sanji is another one, guys. I almost don't care what version you're running. I think you just run Sanji. And a lot of people like, um, you know, a lot of people also really feel the same way about five cost, or uh, three cost Zoro. Uh, I know my buddy Mike does. My buddy Mike, you know, me and him both play Red Yellow Sabo. <laughs> like religiously at this point, you know, just nonstop all the time. Not literally religiously, but y'all know what I mean. Um, and me and him both think that, that um, you know, Zoro should go in like 99% of any Red Yellow Sabo deck, and it can be in any Sabo deck if you want, in, in any Sabo deck if you want it to be, Red Yellow Sabo. Because the thing is, like, okay, he is this card. Y'all, you guys, understand how, how value is? Like, let's just go to Zoro real quick. <clears throat> This is a 3 cost 5k rusher. This is a 5 cost 7k rusher. This one is conditional. This one is not. Here's the thing. This is also a 5 cost 7k rusher, right? Because if you pay 3, he's a 3 cost 5k. And then with the other 2 Dawn, you just attach it to him. And now he's a 5 cost 7k rusher. And he doesn't have a condition. So he is literally ace. This card is better than ace in every single way. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. My voice is cracking. My voice is drying out so bad. He is better than Ace in every single way, except for this right here. I guess technically it's also not searchable by Garp, but you can search it up with, um, uh, what's their name? Uh, Nami, if, if you run a uh, Straw Hat Crew. Uh, but this is the one card that's, that really differentiates what, what Ace does, what, what Ace and uh, Zoro do. Because you're always trying to swing for seven with them and then put them into life because seven is the magic number. Number one for attacks and for what this leader effect does, putting it to life. So this card and this card both are five cost seven Ks no matter what. They're always easily five cost seven Ks. However, this card, you know, Ace has the synergy of having the two cost guy, but that's about it. There's like pretty much no other upside to running Ace, guys. There's almost no other uh, upside to running the Ace. I'm just saying. Still a good card. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Zoro's still in, in... Like, how do I say this? Ace is still a great card, okay? And when you're running this Goa Kingdom version, the combo version, I'm running four Garp Searchers, four Three Brothers Bond. I'm searching these up. I'm taking life aggressively with cards like Flampe, cards like Makino. So that way my Ace is turned on immediately. His, he, he is online immediately. Uh, but having this three-cost card allows for so much more shenanigans. And the same thing is true. The same idea is true for uh, Kid and Killer. This is a four cost seven K. Like these are five cost seven Ks. Zoro and, and Ace are five cost seven Ks. 
guys, if they're at two life, this is a four cost 7K. But that is a big if, guys. That that is a big, very big conditional if they're at that if they're at two or less life. Um, okay, well that this is the I did upgrade this version to this right here. Give me just a second to find it. Red, yellow. So I'm, I'm about to clean this out, guys. I'm about to clean out all of this stuff right here. <clears throat> I did upgrade this upgrade this version to this. I went down some aces here, went down some Luffy's, I went up some Karasu's. I, I literally went down one ace, one Luffy, and went up two Karasu's. That's the only change. Um, it does need more changes, I think, because, for example, I've even noticed with a, a few lists that I've, a few different lists that I've seen actually are going down to three Luffy's and three aces. And at that point, maybe I don't even run the, these three Luffy's, and now I just have all this extra space. That That's five cards of extra space. Uh, and then I, I technically don't have to run the, the events either because I still have the Garp Searcher. He's a 1K counter and a body. But this is a nice trigger, I will say that. Because going forward with this list, guys, one thing that I do want to eventually mess around with, of course I want to go up this card when we get it in OP08.5. But the other card is this one. Uh, guys, I, I just think, I think the best way to play Sanji, or excuse me, Sabo, is having help from your uh, triggers. And it doesn't get much better than that. Popping a five or less, you just have to have trigger cards to trash, though. So that's where it's like, okay, we'll have the Sanjis, we'll have the Onamis, we'll have the Luffys, uh, and maybe a few others. We'll have to see. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there are some more cards coming out for uh, Revo Army very soon. I do want to show you guys, like, I have shown this before. This is a spoiler from OP09. I have shown this in other videos before and a lot of other cards as well. But guys, this card right here, this is OP09. At that point, we're probably going to be making a hard switch over to Revo Army, <laughs> probably indefinitely, or you know, permanently, indefinitely, whatever. It depends. We'll have to see. You know, things change, of course. That's that's why I, I don't want to say permanently, but indefinitely, as in like things might change in the future where we where we change. But until we have any uh, assurance, we're stuck with this right here. This you know, this seems uh, this seems like it'll be very good in OP09. Uh, but I don't, let me not get in. We're, we're, we're going to talk about the Rev Army version uh, after this one. But overall, I do think this list is very strong. But I think it gets even stronger when we get to um, when, when we start building more around this Ace package with the new Ace coming out, and then a little bit more support from Luffy. And at that point, like think about it. Even if we remove these Sabos, and say we uh, say we even keep these uh, these five cost Luffys up here because they're just good triggers that can pop stuff, and they're searchable by Garp. <clears throat> if we if we increase to uh, four of these aces here, we have three, six, ten, uh, fourteen, seventeen targets for Garp. That's a top five search. That's not that's not that bad. You know, like that. That's that's definitely not the the, uh, the worst search uh, ratio I've ever seen for a top five search. It's it's not it's not ideal. You know, it's not the most ideal number, but it's also not bad. Uh, really good stuff there. I still like Gadatsu. I just think this card is really good. I'm just going to put it in for now just to talk about it. Like, I think this card is, like, really good in general. Like, there's a few cards. I'm just going to I'm just gonna have them on here. Like, Kid and Killer is just good. Karasu is just good. This Luffy's good. Uh, let me not talk about any OP08 uh, stuff just yet. That is coming soon. Flampe is just good. This card's just good. Gadatsu's good. Oh, Nami, it, it is situational. It's good from the trigger. This is good. This is good. Let me, let me get off all this other stuff. There are certain cards that it's just like it's hard for you to even pass them up. Like, for example, Kikinojo. Um, where is Lin Lin? It's like these cards right here are so hard to pass up. Let, let me not have any 2K counters. Obviously, we know the 2K counters are good. You have to run them anyway. But, like, when you're building this list, like, I would say, okay, yeah, I think Gadatsu you can get, get rid of. You don't have to run the two-cost versions. But I would say, oh, and, uh, and uh, where is uh, Zoro? Okay, Zoro, and now let me also... I will at least move off Karasu because he's not, like, required. None of these cards are technically required, but these cards you see on the screen, these, uh, and I'll move the leader, obviously. We know who we're talking about. These seven cards. Guys, I've just had so much success with them on so many different levels from so many different matchups across so many different versions. I guess what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter what version of the deck you're running. These cards right here that you see on the screen... They're always good. They're always good in Sabo, no matter what. This card is just always good at, like, you know, getting you back in the game, establishing a huge body. An AK body is massive, guys. It's massive, guys. You can do so much with that. 
five calls, seven K, five calls, seven K. I'm just going to say it like that. Even though it says three calls, five K, this is a five call, seven K. Four call, seven K. It's just a little conditional like aces. Kikinojo coming out of life is just money. It's just straight money. And then Sanji. Sanji wins games all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Being able to come out of life as a blocker, just coming out of life as a body is good enough most of the time, right? Just coming out of life as a body and then a life I can put, uh, excuse me, a body I can put back into my life and get it back the next turn. Uh, this card is just incredible. It, it really is just incredible. So yeah. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Uh, now we're going to check out the, the um, what is it? We're going to look at the um, Revo Army version. Okay. Let me move the leader so it all fits uh, nicely on two lines here. So this is what I was running for the Revo Army version. I've said it before. I think this card is just not quite as good as it is in Bello Betty. It's not that this card is not good. It's just not as good in this deck as it is in Bello Betty. That's just my personal opinion. Um, your, your mileage may vary. And again, always, guys, please do not be afraid to say anything down in the comment section below. Please do not hesitate to say stuff down there if you, if you have a comment, question, suggestion, whatever. Um, but yeah, this version right here is pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. It's I don't I don't know about Dragon yet. I think this could just be Kid and Killer, and I think I mentioned that in a, in a, a recent video. I would just rather this be Kid and Killer, to be honest, because yes, I understand this is a Revo Army card. Um, and one thing I will say, actually, let me let me do this. Let me go minus one there. Go Kid and Killer here, and then probably even get rid of these Gadatsus, to be honest. I, I don't think these are necessarily, like, required in this list. They are a 1k counter, though, so let me go down to three of these and up to two Kid and Killer. Typically speaking, two Kid and Killer is, like, uh, like the perfect number. At least from my experience, it's, like, the perfect number. Because you don't want a bunch of these. You're, you're going to be recycling one for, for like, the entire game. For, the, for like, the entirety of the game. Um, especially, you know, because you're going to swing for seven, for four, attach one Dawn to your leader. So, so for five Dawn, you're swinging six with your leader, seven, seven with Kid and Killer, and then doing whatever else you needed for the turn, buffing another character by 2,000, something like a Karasu, something like an Inazuma, whatever. It just has so much value. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on this list. I will say, guys, it's pretty straightforward. Any of the type lists, I feel like, are very straightforward. Like, this is just... These are all just Revo Army types. And Revo Army doesn't have too much just yet. It will very soon, guys. It's getting a lot of stuff here, like with Koala, Sabo. This other Sabo, too, is worth mentioning. This is a 5-cost, 5 5,000 power, 2K counter, Dress Rosa, Revo Army Sabo. Look what it does. Activate main once per turn. You may put the top or bottom of your life cards into your hand. Uh, and then this turn, give this character plus 1,000 power. So, you know, next turn... You can take a card from your life, buff him by a thousand, attach one more dawn, swing for seven, life him, and then you, you got a life and you'll have a 2k counter in hand. This is a very solid card. It's a promo card. I don't know when it comes out. Don't. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No reason to ask me because I, I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another card coming out. I think, this, I think this just came out in the West. I could be wrong about that. Someone correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong or if you know when it comes out. I don't know when Koala comes out, but I believe this just came out in the West where it's like you attach two Dawn to this guy, or excuse me, you attach one Dawn to this three cost character, and he's a 7K. So this is like a four cost 7K you just throw into life. He is a Sabo, so he is searchable by like, you know, stuff like Garp if needed. Uh, this right here, this can search up any uh, five cost or lower Sabo, Ace, or Luffy. So that Sabo we were just looking at is actually, you know, this is, if, if you're if you're uh, gonna be committing full time to like Red, Yellow, Revo Army, or even Red, Black, uh, uh, Revo Army potentially like with Red Black Sabo this is probably a card worth getting because this is a Dawn times one effect not your turn only like this is a static effect if you have one Dawn attached and if you have four, and, and excuse me and if you have four or less cards in your hand this character gains plus 2,000 power hey it's 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 not bad and it's a three cost card so it's perfect for um, hitting with your uh, your leader's effect okay um, that's about it. I, I will say this, though. There is one more card that I plan on messing with more in the future, and it, it is this uh, Revolutionary Army General Headquarters. It, it's just like the uh, stage from uh, Germa, the Germa 66, uh, the Germa 66 uh, Reju, you know, stage. One cost, uh, activate main, you trash one card from your hand and rest the stage. 
notice you don't have to trash it, like i said it's just like the germa stage right it doesn't care what card you trash from your hand it doesn't have to be a revo army card <clears throat> excuse me it does not have to be a revo army card that you trash from your hand but you look at the top three cards of your deck and reveal up to one revo army revolutionary army type card and add it to your hand and then place the the uh the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order so really good stuff there right let me take a break real quick guys and take a sip of this water one second Okay, all right. <clears throat> Another card I do want to mention is Fire Fist. This card is deceptively good. Let me tell you right now, Fire Fist plus Koala is popping a 7,000 power character. If you can somehow combo that with Karasu as well, you're popping an 8,000 power character. Um, <clears throat> I guess technically you can combo with like a Raise Max, you know, if you... If, if you want to run this, I don't really recommend it for Sabo. It's, it's it just doesn't quite work. Like it, it, excuse me, it does work, but it's not really what we're going for. Let me let me say it like that. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, like this is pretty straightforward, pretty solid list here. Okay, let's check out a few more. I do want to show you guys this. This is like going to be the a totally comprehensive, you know, end all be all for red yellow Sabo guys. We're gonna have endless you know tons of games on here that you know we, we went through 30 games and we're going to go through all these different deck lists i'll have everything um sorted out you know everything uh time stamped in the general description this will be like the uh one-stop shop for anything red yellow sabo at least up to op08 um okay um there was one I wanted to show you guys. We did see this on one of the games. It was like called Odd. This was that random deck list we saw all the time of like, you know, the Gastinos in there. It's got five cost stuff. It's got seven cost. It was meant to be like a one, three, five, seven curve. There wasn't any one drop that I could run for this list. I guess Machino. I guess I technically could have ran like Machino. I don't know. Anyway, whatever the case is. <clears throat> or maybe Fompe. I should have ran Fompe. That's what it should have been. But then it would have been Gastino, bounce your three or less back to your life. And then on five, you know, we just bounced a card back to their life, right? Okay, now Gadatsu, pop a card, you know, based on what their power, what, excuse me, what their life total is. And then Edward Newgate to pop a card into, and then seven, you know, we had, uh, wait, did I, I messed up. So uh, three, five, seven, and then nine, excuse me. And then nine, we have Yamato to kind of finish things off and start, you know, get a really solid curve. So I won't spend a lot of time on this. Pause this, read it if you want to. This one's just fun. Okay, let's keep going. Got a few more. I do want to show you guys the uh, white beard version uh, real quick. Right. Maybe it was this one. Hang on. I think it's this one. Yeah, so this is the most recent version I was messing with for uh, white beard pirates. It's not finished. Uh, this one does not have a lot of work put into it, but it is OP08.5. It does have a very strong, like, 5-7 curve. You know, like, anything from, like, 4 to 8, I should say. See, like, 4, four anything, I don't know. I guess it does have, the reason I was running the uh, in, the Emporio Ivankov is so that way it did have a 3-5-7 curve. And it technically does have one as well with with uh, with Izo. So it's, like, Izo into Ivankov. Even if you don't use the effect, just you have a blocker into ace either ace and into um new gate <clears throat> and then i guess okay it does have the nine cost as well so i did i did take the entire uh curve into into consideration uh but ultimately this is this is the white beard list that i'm kind of working on we'll have to see I, I have to say i thought this card was going to be so much better when i first saw it and it, it is very decent in sabo there are times where you just slam it get your value throw it back to life swing for six with your leader and you're, you're off to the races in that way because you, you got rid of one of their bodies, you gained a life, and you probably got rid of another body potentially if, if you could with your leader. And yeah, but overall, I will say I've been a little bit disappointed with this card, but we'll have to see. You know, a lot of the games we you see on the sim are just completely random players trying all kinds of new stuff where it's like, okay, you might not expect that in a, in a normal game kind of thing. And get, think about it, guys. This card pops just about anything on... Um, um, Dofi's Field. The only thing this does not pop is Edward Weevil and the new 4 cost 6k uh, Boa. And of course the 6 cost 8k if they run that, but some, some lists aren't even running that from what I've seen. 
Uh, but yeah, this list could use some serious revisions. I just kind of wanted to have these. I, I like the two white beards, or excuse me, the two ace cards in here because they're both just really strong. Uh, this one, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, this card is actually just so strong for what it does. Pause and read this, guys. I will read it real quick. Once per turn, if this character would be removed from play by one of your opponent's effects, effects, instead you may give this character minus 2,000 power for this turn. Once per turn, you could basically completely avoid a KO effect. That is so much stronger than it might sound, guys. That is top-notch. That is very, very strong. Uh, and it, it does not have Rush in Sabo, but if you're in a Whitebeard Pirates deck, this, this character also has Rush. Very, very powerful. We already know about this card. This card does have Rush, as long as you have two or less life. Uh, and then the rest is pretty straightforward, Whitebeard Pirates type. Okay, let's look at like maybe one or two more, and then we will go ahead and, um, you know, wrap things up. Um, I think, let me see something. I mentioned this on the last time we did this. Oh, let me see, is this the Sky? Okay, this is the Sky Island version. I did want to show this, Never mind. You know, forget that last thought. Let's get, let's go through with this, and then we'll talk about uh, one or two more lists, and we'll be done. Um, this was the Sky Island version, where it had the Shuras, it had the Gadatsus, the Ohms, the Anels. Um, of course, it's going to have the Holy, since it's running Ohm package. <clears throat> Excuse me, since it's running that whole package. I thought this was going to be the way to go. I thought, when, when I first started, like, um, not when I first started building the deck, when I started really trying to take the decks to the next level, like, okay, what version of red yellow of whatever color you know like of everything within the red yellow color what has a way to fill the uh to flood the board okay and now has that they can go ohm holy what has a card with lots of like protection and resilience okay they have an l where, where it's hard to ko it it's hard to remove it what has like good removal okay we have raigo we have gadatsu and i just thought like everything was going to line up like what has a search or two that, that will make it consistent Sure, I can search up like everything you see here, guys, except a few things like in the middle here and like the uh, the Flampes and the, the Zoros. But then you play the deck and you're like, hmm, that ended up not working out as well as I thought it would. You know, and, and it's it's sad. It's sad, but it's also it is what it is. It's one of those things where like on paper, this deck made so much sense. Like like I said, on paper, this deck makes so much sense and who knows maybe it just needs a few more revisions maybe it needs a few tweaks here and there to like fix it and make it better but again it's it even has 2k counters it has triggers it has like everything i thought it would need but i don't know maybe i'm missing out like maybe this maybe the ace package doesn't need to be there you know what i mean this could be something else i do like the two charlotte linlins i like the kidding killer let me just make some quick revisions and talk about it as we go and then maybe at this point we, we do have the Kikanojo since we're trying to be pretty aggressive and attacking to our opponent's life. Like maybe this is the route it goes because I'm because now I'm also including all the cards I thought were super strong, right? And then um, let me get Luffy. Just add two of those. And then maybe the list is complete in this way, potentially. <laughs> I don't know because because Anel also has Rush too, guys. Like that's something you sh you know you can't you can't um, under you know how do you say it. You can't sleep on that, right? You can't sleep on that. Maybe get rid of one of the Rygos and go up another Anel just so we have another body, another Rusher. Because now we have four, seven, plus four. We have 11 Rush cards. We have ways to remove early stuff. We have ways to remove late stuff. We have a way to just recurringly get value. Um, if that's even a word, recurringly. You know what I mean. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. We're almost three hours into this in, into this um, video. And I'm not going to lie, guys. At this point, we're making it three hours. Th this video will be three hours at this point. We're not stopping now. Now that we made it this far, we're, we're going to make it to three hours to say we did it. Uh, but but we're not wasting time either. We're going over these you know these really interesting lists. Uh, we do have one more list we're going to look at after this one. But I want you guys to tell me what y'all think, like out of all the lists we saw. Because um, we're going to look at one more. We looked at the Goa Kingdom one. Right? Hang on. Yeah, we definitely looked at the Goa Kingdom one, right? Yeah, this one right here, the K99 one. So we looked at the Goa Kingdom one. We looked at the Big Mom Pirates one. We looked at Revo Army. We looked at Sky Island. We looked at Whitebeard. We looked at a few random ones here and there, right? And then, like, I just want to show you guys the original list. Like, this original list, I think, was kind of onto it. Like, okay, this was the pre-list. This was, like, before um, EB01 came out. So there was no Kid and Killer. And, guys, I'm not going to lie. This list was kind of... 
like this 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 list was pretty solid i'm not gonna lie like it had ways to flood the board it had all the rushers it had the ways to play from life it, it i was not able to fit the um the uh searchers in here but i probably could honestly like looking back i pro what i probably could do is go down to three ace three luffy drop down to two actually i could just get rid of all of these hang on and then go um let me go to ace real quick like this and then i could go uh garp if i were to make a quick revision to this and then we can also fit in the Zoros now, or the, uh, excuse me, the Kid, Kid and Killers. We'll go two of those, just because I think that's the magic number. And, like, this list is probably right where it needs to be. And then maybe go up one event. Um, yeah, there we go. Whoops, we'll just go up one. Just one. And there you go. This list is kind of like, this, this pre-list <laughs> is almost everything I needed it to be. And this even had, like, this little 12-card miniature package of the Land of Wano stuff excuse me, 16 cards, because Otama can go back to life from um, Momonosuke. Who knows, maybe at that point, actually, maybe instead of going the one uh, uh, extra bond, maybe we actually go the nine cost Yamato, because that's also a card that can go back to life from Momonosuke, potentially. We'll have to see. Uh, it, this list is not running Flampe. That is one, like, change i would make pretty much immediately is flampe i'd probably take out these uh these otamas even though they are land of wano <clears throat> excuse me uh th this card i just feel like it's your one drop like if you don't get your four garbs maybe you'll get one of your flampes and then you you still have a, a turn one play you know what i mean it's just that strong uh but then once everything did come out so now let's check out this is once eb01 did hit the you know finally came out this was it Saba, right here. That you ready? One, like, take a mental image, and then you'll see it's it's a little bit different, but it had a lot of similar cards. They're in the Karasus. We had the Luffy's all the way up, and and like I said, I say this with every deck that I make, guys. These aren't finished most of the time. Um, I will say this though. Um, the um the Goa Island one that I was looking at, and the Big Mom Pirates one, those are probably fine tuned and finished where the only thing left to do is to add your own preference to it. If there's something you prefer over another card, then just add that. But like those two were pretty much finished. But guys, this is just the original version I came up with and just threw it into the sim and started, you know, cracking skulls with it, man. Just started going to town. And uh, it does. Th this deck is brutal. Like this this deck really does get the job done. Um, but at the same time, like I said, I think the best way to go about it from here is I've, I've seen lists now where they go down to three aces, three Luffy's, and they drop all of the other Luffy's, the little four cost Luffy. And then in this situation, we can just add Garp. And there we go. You know, that's pretty much a fix. We And we have two spots open still. You know what I mean? That's just a quick way to fix the deck and to make it a little more um, consistent. And then at that point, drop down to two. I, I think dropping down to two Kitten Killers, some people might say three is a better, a better number. You know, sure, do that. You know, let me... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me and now in this situation here we've got three spots left you know we can do whatever we want with them so so yeah okay we got to find a few more things to talk about guys even though you know, i know you know it's this this video is going on for long we do have a few more to talk about we will talk we will check out the trigger version and the x version the x version notice it's almost exactly the same as what we just saw that one was barely any different it might not even have been different uh, but I do want to look at the trigger version because another thing that I went through in my testing was like, dude, is there, Oh, we, we got to check out the straw hat version too, guys. I'm sorry. There's so many things to go over. Um, where is, I missed where we were triggers. Here we go. This was a version I experimented with as well, where it was like, okay, you know, I started noticing if I was getting any support for my triggers at all, if I was getting any support from triggers with versions like this, it's like, okay, the game's just over but you don't get to control that, right? Like sometimes you get help from your triggers, sometimes you don't. And when, when that happens, it feels horrible. When, like, excuse me, when it happens, when you do get the help from the triggers, you're like, dude, that was, <laughs> this deck's insane. But then there's times where you don't get help from the triggers and it's like, okay, this deck's not very good. And you, you know, you, we wanna stay away from that. But either way, really good stuff here. You know, the Sanjis need to go up to a four of in this list if I were to mess with this at all. Um, I would even drop down, uh, maybe drop down, okay, what I've been saying all night, we'll drop this, this, and this, and now we get to go up the two Sanjis, and we still have four spots available. Uh, I think there's just something to be said there, guys, like, there's, like, this, this little 10-card, 
you know, version. Oh, I know. And then from here, we can actually have the Kid and Killers. We'll just add two. And, um... Mm, I don't know. L let's not think too much about it. But, like, there's, like, a 10-card package now I think you run. Oh, at that point, I guess we would want to run the Garp to, to search them up uh, faster. Hang on, let me go to four of these, and I'll remove cards um, instead. Um, at that point, we'll go down one of these and maybe down one of these or something. You know, something along those lines. I'm just kind of ad-libbing here and there. Uh, but long story short, there's, like, this little 10-card package of Ace, Ace, and Luffy. You know, two cost Ace, five cost Ace, and Luffy. And then from there, I think there's also going to be um, this card as well. The other five cost Red Ace, where now all of a sudden, and I know I messed all that up. Hang on, let me... I'm just going to get rid of this for now. Hang on. It's like this little four, eight... Or hang on, this this can go down since we're uh, going down the uh, aces. So it'd be three, six, nine, plus four is 13. So it's like a 13 card package with another four cards to get to 17 for the searchers. And then you just build the rest kind of the way you want to. At least that's what I've that's what I've noticed. At least like in, in my messing around with this list and trying to make it as good as I can, I, I have noticed this little you know it, it's like a little package here. And one thing I do want to mention as well is like I don't know. There's so much to talk about, but I think going forward, I do think this card has a place in the deck because anytime you get something from life, like I'm just, I'm just adding cards. I know this is over the amount we need, but like. Anytime you have a trigger that pops a four or less or a five or less, like for example, Onami, Luffy, the other Nami, where is she at? This one, like stuff like this. This can help. This can like win a game for you. You, you know what I'm saying? Where like your opponent gets off to a good start and you don't, and then like they attack into your life like you would expect, and then it's like, oh, what's this uh, trigger? KO your guy. Like this can just flat out even the scores for you right away. Uh, let me add the other Onami too, just while I'm talking about it. Um, it's not letting me add anymore. Oh man, because it's like capped out. Let me just get rid of some of these for a second. Y'all bear with me, guys. We're just having fun right now on the sim, to be honest. We're just kind of messing around. Oh, uh, this thing's like locked out. Oh, because I don't have my leader. I don't have the, the uh, leader. There we go. Now, now it should let me. I was like, why isn't it letting me do this? Drop down one of those. And then we'll go to... Where it, there it is, Onami. These little triggers here, and by the way, these are also counters. Like, don't don't forget that, guys. Like, four Onami, four Luffy, four Nami. Those are all 1K counters. And they're, you know, these two are, like, decent bodies, too. Five cost 5K, five cost 6K. Those are right where we need them to be to be able to get value pretty easily just by pushing cards back to life if we need to. Uh, Onami can give Banish. It has high utility. And so that leads me to, like, okay, well, then there's probably a really strong Straw Hat version of the deck out there. Um, let me see if I can find it. Straw pistol? Let me see. This was it. This was the version I was working on. Let me get rid of the um, leader. I was messing with a straw hat version where we had the Namis. Nami can search up most of the rushers. Like, okay, we don't need to run dragon. I'm just going to remove that for now. Uh, but you've got four Nami. You've got your, your monkey D. Luffy's here. You've got your Zoros. The kitten killers you can't search up, but that's okay. It's not a, it's not a huge deal. But your Onamis, you can. Let me go ahead and go, um, let me grab the leader one more time, and then we'll go uh, the Onami. And we got one more spot left. Let's go ahead and just go up a Satori, whatever, you know. <laughs> just, just trying to fill it out for now. Um, but look look at all the stuff that's searchable, guys. Like, this is stuff that you can actually search up with your, um, with your, with your Namis. You've got four Nami, right? That can search up four Zoro, three Luffy, Four Onami, three Jet Pistol, four Brad Beams, four Gum Gum Red Hawks. Uh, you cannot search this up, actually, guys. This is a uh, Goa Kingdom, believe it or not. Uh, Bonnie is Egghead, uh, Bonnie Pirates. Four of this Luffy, four of this Frankie. So what was that? Or, excuse me, three Luffy, four Frankie. So seven plus seven is 14, plus four is 18, 21, 25, plus two. So like 27 cards. So in this version of the deck, it could search up 27 cards. You know what I mean? So like that's, <clears throat> it's a top five searcher. Like that should work pretty much 99% of the time, if not every time, you know, nothing's ever perfect. You're going to whiff every now and then, but those are very high, you know, very high chances to get one out of five cards when, you, when 27 out of the 50 cards in the list are what, what you can get. Seems good. 
Uh, but I do think there's something to be had here. There's something to be said here. And then one more deck we'll look at before we move on, because this will at least, you know, before we end out the video, finally, one more ver version of the deck I want to look at is Egghead, the Egghead version. Okay. It's one that I haven't completely, what is Edit 9? Hang on, we got to look at Edit 9. Okay, I think this was a version that was just running a bunch of the good cards. Yeah, just random good cards here and there. Not worth looking at. Um, you know, you can pause and check it out if you want to, but um, hang on. Sabo update? Hang on, guys. We're going through all kinds of crazy stuff. This was a, uh, one I was messing with. This this one's kind of fun. Lots of trigger support. Notice that, guys. Lots of triggers. Lots of rush. But no, we were try I was trying to find the um, um, egghead. I might not have actually made it yet. Yeah, I don't think I, I, I don't actually think I made it. Trigger happy, uh, straw hat crew. This is kind of like it, but no, let me uh, just type in egghead. This is something we'll have to mess around with at some point in OP08, 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 and OP08.5. Because this Luffy is egghead searchable. We have an egghead searcher right here. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Add, uh, uh, look at the top five cards of your deck. Add one card with the type egghead other than the man uh, whose world's the, the man with the world's greatest brain. That's this card's name. Um, <clears throat> add it to your hand and then place the rest of the bottom of your deck in any order. And in this in this kind of stuff here, the cards we could search up would be like Frankie, um, which is, you know, this is a trigger with a 2K counter. We know what Frankie is, right? Lilith Lilith would not be bad either. We we lose the trigger, but hear me out. It's, it's still a three cost 5,000 power card like Pero Sparrow, and it, ha it's, it lets you look at the top five cards of your deck and reveal up to one card with the type Egghead other than Lilith and put into your hand and put the rest of the bottom of your deck in any order. That would allow you to search up these other cards. It would let you search up Bonnie, Nami, this guy, uh, uh, S-Shark. He's kind of decent. Dawn times one when attacking. Your opponent cannot activate blocker during this turn. Uh, you may trash one card from your hand. If you have two or less life cards, play this card. He's not even uh, leader locked on the trigger. But even the cards that are leader locked that we might want to run, like 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 Lilith for her uh, trigger, and the same thing for um, actually no no, we'll talk about S Seraphim in, or S Snake in a minute. Uh, but <coughs> excuse me, but with Nami, she doesn't care if you can use the trigger or not. She just wants to trash a card that has trigger on it, and then she will trash that and go from there. So there might be something to explore here. Some cards we just can't use. Period. Like there's no reason to use Robin. It's searchable, but there's no real reason to use it. But hey, this card, okay, he just loses the trigger, but he's still a five cost 6k, 1k counter blocker. You know, there, there might, all I'm trying to say is there might be something to mess around with there. We'll have to see. No telling. Uh, one thing I do want to say though is S Snake, five cost, 6,000 power, 1k counter with an on play up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of six or less, other than Luffy, other than Monkey D. Luffy, cannot attack until the end of your opponent's next turn. Trigger, activate this card's on play. It's searchable egghead, like we were saying with this other card. And then at that point, maybe we run, please save me. You know, maybe we, we run something like this. If you have two or less life, give up to one of your leaders or characters plus 3,000 power during this battle. And then we can take life aggressively. Like I've been, that's how I've been playing with it anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then that triggers crazy, right? Playing a five cost or less egghead type character from your trash seems good. Okay, we're finally done, guys. I'm done rambling. We made it to three hours. This was a true marathon for, uh, you know, Red, Yellow, Sabo. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. You know, let's talk about Red, Yellow, Sabo. And uh, real quick, let's go ahead and let me give a quick shout out. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who supports the channel, whether you're liking, sharing, subscribing, you know, uh, just viewing whatever. Okay. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And then one more thing here to the VV Pirates patron page. Thank you to everybody who supports the channel. You guys are amazing. Thank you to, well, okay, hang on. I'm so tired guys. I messed that up. Thank you to everybody who bought the, who, uh, who bought the play mat. I hope you guys are enjoying it. And then, then we get over to the patrons. Whoops. Thank you guys to everybody who donates to the channel just to help out. I really do appreciate it. All right. Please not forget to like and subscribe guys until next time. Peace.